I can't believe I haven't found anything yet. There have been thousands of makers before me. You'd think one of them would have fiddled around with the soul before. It feels like everyone and everything around me remembers where they've come from better than I do. But the only memory I'm concerned about is that of the storms. Where do they come from? And where do they go? Honestly, I'm trying to make more friends. Some I can only hear. But they'll be here soon enough. <laughs> After all, that's what summoning's for, isn't it? I'd love it if you could be my friend too. The thing is, I can't help but wonder. Without all of those pieces, even just one or two, who would you become? And the people for whom those pieces are gone, who have lost the parts of themselves that magic has decreed one small piece of a whole, what, what happens to them? Hello, everybody, and welcome to session five of Fraying Threads, an Invisible Sun campaign uh, written and made by Money Cook Games. I am Mare. I am your game master. I use they, she pronouns. And today we've got some fun stuff going on. Um, first of all, everyone's going to go around and say, hey, who, who they are, who they are playing, their character sentence, and any mentions of downtime that they just want to like let everybody know that might have what happened uh we're gonna start with kian today why not hello hello everybody my name is kian my pronouns are they them theirs and today i am playing aspen thane who is a connected gallant of the order of makers who walks with the secret companion um and during downtime while the week before i had been really successful in making this time I was not successful in making, and I am now cursed. Um, <gasps> so, uh, yeah, I'll reveal what that curse is in a little bit when we all uh, get to interact with each other. But that's all that I got up to. Uh, Jilly. Hello, my name is Jilly. I am Oh Look, It's Jilly on the internets. And my pronouns are she, her. I play Lace, whose pronouns are she, they. Um, Lace has spent the last little bit um, trying to get promoted within the Order of Weavers, uh, working on her weaving skills, um, which has been largely successful um, with her sentient song friend, Arya, who is real fun. <laughs> They've had a good time. I the way that I picture this is like mimosas and weaving. <laughs> Victor. Oop, you all right? You there? You good? I didn't know if you got cut off or said my name because there's two V's currently on screen. <laughs> and so I was like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> so I read the captions. Hello, my name is Victor. I use they, he, and fey pronouns. I play uh, Ray, who is a biz uh, bizarre ardent of the Order of Guenica who disgorges creatures. Fun creatures. Little sharks. Totally not gross. Kind of gross. Um, and over the over down downtime, you know, just making moves, like getting ready for my art show, becoming increasingly and increasingly stressed and paranoid about this shovel until I discover what the curse is. It makes you lose things that are important to you oh, over that's time. Terrible. And and what else does it do? Oh, and it makes you par more and more paranoid and uncomfortable about owning it. So that's why you want to get rid of it so bad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible, uh, but harmless if you don't keep it for too long. Yeah, uh, except Ray did. Um, and so an, a, a, an important sculpture to him for the art that went missing. You kept it uh, for like two to three weeks because you yeah. wanted to see what it did. Yeah, he was investigating it. 
now he's investigated it, and it sucks. So he <laughs> threw it over the fence into Trudy's yard. Again, poor Trudy. Poor fucking Trudy. <laughs> Worst neighbor. Cheetah. Listen, Ray's having a hard time. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Gina. Uh, I am, well, she, her pronouns. I'm playing Sprunna, who's also a she, her. Uh, she is an established ardent of the Order of the Vance who is adored by the sea. Uh, she didn't do much this downtime. She went to class because, you know, she got in trouble. So she went to class, finally. Um, despite being late in the block, she managed to get into a divination class. Did really well. Um, unfortunately, that asshole shows up late and does better than everybody else. <laughs> um, learned a new spell, which I probably will not use, but learned some divination magic. Very exciting for her. Um, yeah, that's all she did, though, because <laughs> didn't have time for anything else. And last but not least, our guest, Val. Hello, it is me, the guest. Hi, everyone. I'm Valiant Dorian. I use him, his pronouns. You can find me all around the internet at Valiant Dorian or at also Spirit Bear. Please enjoy that lovely treasure hunt I just set you on. It's night. I have the distinct pleasure of playing Ishmael Kadir, who is an iconoclastic empath from the Order of Goetics who calls upon the serpent. Oh, it feels good to say that character sentence again. And it's, I don't have any downtime activities. It's been two months since the Soul's Confidant. We got our nice happy ending. I'm co-living with my partner. Things are great. I'm having a great time. My hair is gray. Salt and pepper look. Stressful. That's what happens when you go Stress and <laughs> That's death. what you get. That's what you get when you go to the pale. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, man. Take this away from me. Okay. Um I didn't say my character sentence, should I? Would you like to? I would I will attempt an endeavor to remember it this week. Um, I, Lace, am a bizarre ardent of the Order of Weavers who splinters into fragments. I didn't catch, ah. but is anyone doing recap? I think Val should do recap. I did a lot of the recap in TSC for those of y'all who were watching TSC in the chat. I, what, I will am I going to do the recap? I wasn't I, there. <laughs> I will do I will do the recap. It's okay. fine. Everything okay. is fine. This is this is lace recapping how much everything is fine. Um l last week um or 2 weeks ago I guess in within the universe um Aspen made a thing. Um that one was substantially more successful than his most recent attempt. Um and I think continues to get to use the thing, right? Because it didn't break when you used it. Um, then we went on a field trip to find out more about these plants. Um, and we saw, I think it's Hector Winograd, right? Is Hector Winograd. The... Yes. Um, who is a friend of a friend of Lace's. Um, and we went to go find out about... A, these mysterious flowers that have been appearing in Ray's swamp, thanks to Ray's friend Songbird, who lives in Ray's head. Um, shrug. Um, and also the weird vines that we saw in our visions that our plant friend thought were the were the creatures that had killed her half-world. So we were a little nervous of that. We went to go find out stuff. We found out some things. We found out that it is... While we didn't determine whether they are an invasive or murderous species, we did find out that they are not originated from the green. Um, we don't know where they do come from, but not the green. Um, then... Sophrona went on a field trip to meet up with her friend, who perhaps Sophrona should recap what I, what Sophrona learned from there, because I'm not sure what I know. You Emery don't. and I, Emery and I went to Lower Taverswood to uh, see a memorial to the forest of my handwriting so bad here. Emerin, Emerin, and her children, as it says. Um, which 
gives us the name of the, well, an exonym at least. I actually don't know. Um, that a name of the half world that was destroyed. Um, that's pretty much what I learned there. And then I think we went, did another small thing with lace. Oh, also, in the other scene, we also, Sophrona learned, she didn't tell any of you this, that all of the vines and flowers that we've been investigating, their invisible roots all go to Ray specifically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I forgot. That. That's the concerned face on Val. Yeah, it's, it's, the rest of you don't know that, but. No, I'm sure learned. it's fine. fine. I'm sure it's fine. It's Guys, fine. don't be jealous that I'm the center of attention. Totally. It Ray is your show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready to start the session? All right. I've got my first card pull on the Silver Sun today. I have pulled Imprisoning Ice, value of four, notions, cast clocks, and wind, meanings, entrapment, imprisonment, danger, and conflict. The very environment holds you fast when you are trapped in the ice. You cannot move and the cold threatens your life. You can't persuade the ice or trick it. You can't fight it or best in a contest. The ice is impersonal, unrelenting, and vastly powerful, even though it's nothing more than frozen water. Unless, of course, it's more than that. Perhaps there is intelligence there. Perhaps it's not just frozen water, but a living spirit of cold, of stillness, of imprisonment. In each case, the actions of the ice might be entirely personal. You may have thought your terrible fate down upon your own head. Red magic is enhanced, blue is hindered. Uh, Ardents have a plus one to their venture. Which is literally three of our cast. <laughs> Ray. Over the course of your downtime and talking with Songbird, Songbird has been able to recall some of their more memories and give you a solid potential lead on where you might look. Last session, you did learn that they are not part of the green sun, but potentially something adjacent, maybe close enough where you might be able to get somewhere. You have learned that someone by the name of Ishmael Kadir, though not the highest level degree of Goetic in the order, is very familiar with the stacks and the names of entities. And he might be a good person in that might be able to help you. Very pleasant individual. No one has really said anything bad about them. So you find them yourself in front of Ishmael's office in the order. Um, to give Val a little bit of insight, you see the little character prompt, the little character thing. Uh, Ray, I believe, is around 206 centimeters tall. I think you said like 70. Um, <laughs> and, uh, is just sort of would probably like just very like, like gently try to make sure there's not a very loud knocking, like... It is a small pause from Ishmael on the other side before he greets out. Come in, come in. I'm available. Mm-hmm. Opens the door, makes sure to watch his head, and just, uh, it's like, hello. Uh, honored higher member <laughs> <laughs> what degree is uh ray first, first degree, degree go in <laughs> excellent wonderful i love this for me you see ishmael sat at a desk organized neat but covered in tomes and scrolls parchments uh, you see that uh, he seems to be looking over a scroll, uh, yellowed, old, weathered, uh, written in silver ink that glistens when his eyes are upon it. But the minute he lifts his eyes to look upon you, also a set of gray eyes, he the light from the ink stops uh, glowing. And he looks at you and you see a uh, young man with a perfectly manicured beard with long dark hair that is set upon the side with an undercut. 
he has two snakes that weave around his arms. One is black, covered in starlight. The other is pale, covered in flowers, in pansies. And they move independently of each other all around his body. Uh, he's wearing a set of reading glasses. Uh, and he looks upon you. Uh, wearing uh, black and gold robes. And he's wearing a pin indicating that he is of the third degree of the Order of Goetica. Uh, and hearing you kind of like go, uh, honored, higher member, he lifts his gaze up to look at you. He says, um... Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> and and he, he like fully takes you in and like stands up and he says, I see you are a uh, one of our first degree members. Please come in, make yourself comfortable and just call me Ishmael. Have a seat. Uh, thank you. Um, and as Ray um, comes close to you, Val, what is Ishmael's favorite scent? The smell of coffee. Brewing. I think um, upon meeting Ray for the first time, uh, people usually tend to smell their favorite scents. Just a little fist like quirk of his. So I think you get like a very like like a like a gentle like br like brush of air, almost like, and then like the strong like scent of coffee, and then you know Ray sits down and makes no. Uh, it sort sort of seems to smell it too. And um, but uh, just makes a makes a makes a like a like a confused look, and then just smiles. Uh, hello. Um, I uh, I was asking around. My name is Ray. Uh, Pleasure to I, meet you, Ray. Thank you. Um, I was asking around because I'm having a little bit of a difficulty in research regarding a friend of mine that seems friend. to be trapped between like the suns or in like a half world um but they friend. also seem yes understood continue sorry uh and they, but it feels, when I talk to them, it feels the same or close to like summoning an entity. Not exactly the same. There's like something different about it. And so I, I, I think that I can get them out using techniques of the Goetica, but I'm not they don't have many memories huh uh, you see as, as you're like talking through this Ishmael is just kind of like okay you have a friend who's from another son cool they're trapped somewhere okay that's odd but alright uh, depending what son they're from that could be completely you might need a visa to leave. That might just be the problem. Uh, and then the more you talk about it, and then you are like, I communicate with them similarly to a colloquy, and then his face changes a little bit. It's like, yeah, I could try and get them out. His face darkens even more. Uh, I think I think you see like a shadow on his face of like, hmm, I don't particularly like the direction of this conversation. Uh, and he kind of uh, clears his throat, pushes his like salt and pepper hair behind it, behind an ear. And he says, and leans back in his chair. Um, Ray, uh, help. Hmm. I am quite perplexed by your particular set of circumstances. This is a friend of yours. You know who they are, an entity. Green sun or similar. How long have you known this friend? Uh, ever since I came back um, from Understood. Shadow. Understood. And uh, you call them friends, so I assume your conversations have been cordial, friendly. Yes. Yes, it's um, 
when I first got here, uh, it was it was difficult to adjust. Um, and people were I it was hard to get close to people. And this was the only thing that sort of communicated with me. It, mm-hmm. For a long time, it was emotions, sort of like the color of ideas, not words. And then, you know, so I thought it was just some strange quirk of being back. Mm-hmm. But then I realized it was another being. And now we've been talking for years. And you say speaking to them feels like a like a colloquy. Is that correct? Yes, but no. I I've never experienced a colloquy that could make me see a different place. Like I can like we have spoken in dreams they have produced real items here like flowers ishmael has a flashback to an entity from a from the red sun that could move between uh, photos and uh his expression darkens a little bit again uh, and he says, you said that you want to get them out. Did, is that what they asked of you? Uh, yes, they are dying. They've been trapped. They're a plant-like entity. They have no food or water. Hmm. And I think there's a different emotion that flashes on Ishmael's face. Grief? When he hears you say that. And he nods, he hears you out, and he says, green or near the green? Hmm. I mean, and you see him, like, put on, like, put on his glasses again and look over, like, a particular tome, pull it out, open it up, uh, to a page he says well that is that is something we haven't considered have you considered the night side the path hidden oh, no, of the no. green because I, I summoned a green entity um, mm-hmm. to try and speak with something that was like it that has been here it's sentient but they couldn't speak they couldn't, they knew that it was sentient, but they couldn't understand each other. Hmm. Well, so, uh, and he kind of like is trying to figure out a way of like explaining this. And he says, so there are the typical paths of the sun, but there's also the night side that lives underneath, hidden, shadowed, depending on how you'd like to, depending on what scholar you are and what uh, path of philosophy you take. It would explain as to why your entity feels adjacent to the green. Uh, and he will like begin opening up uh, the book. I do you want and to just says, clarify the, the, the path? So when people say the path or the night side path, it represents the, how the flow of magic and the order of the suns. So the path of suns goes from your typical that I've been doing in games, from silver to green to blue to indigo and so on and so forth. And that's the normal path of magic as it flows from the invisible sun throughout the rest of them. The reverse going backwards from gold to red to pale to gray and the opposite direction is called the night side path. And that is mm-hmm. kind of, and it's not like the opposite of a sun it whatever a sun in uh, uh is like indigo is truth it's that sun's values but to the extreme okay. so it's not really a yeah. hidden path it's the how the flow of magic f- flows throughout the suns yeah my bad it's okay uh, thank you for the clarification uh so yeah so when when 
Uh, Ishmael explains this. He says, as you would know, the green sun is life, growth, the uh, prosperity, the abundance of nature and all that it has to offer. Uh, survival and growth and power within that. Well, consider this path that to its greatest extreme. Vast and expansive uh, growth, development, abundance, but almost to a ravenous nature. It would... If your friend is indeed from the night side, then... It would explain the danger, I suppose. The, the thing that I, I struggle with, right? Mm. Because this place, as compared to Shadow, is just as dangerous and strange as any. I love this. I, I, I love Saturday. Mm. I... I know I might come off as... I don't know much, though. I've been focused on things that bring me joy more than more knowledge. And so I I might be a little... Um, people might think I'm simple. Um, but I know... I know danger and I if there's a danger that I feel when I talk to Songbird it is I guess what you call that dark side a desperation to survive a trust in me and uh, an end to loneliness. Uh, Ishmael kind of like smiles and says, you are quite the empathetic Goetic. Not many Goetics uh, view summoned entities or unsummoned entities in the way that you do. But I understand your friendship. So I will help you. And what do you want out of this? Are you trying to summon it to have a, dis a discussion? You mentioned, I believe, that you see visions and dreams. Uh, is there something else other than getting out that they specifically need from you in this moment? Um, they they want to live. They don't want to die. Is the... is what I've heard is what I know and um, mm. I, I guess in summoning them I can think of maybe even if I can't get them out of that place maybe I can provide something here mm -hmm. to help make that place less awful a place where question. they can thrive question on summoning uh, to our GM if I remember correctly Summoning is usually a time the situation. Is there a way to like facilitate something that Ray would like where it is able to keep them kind of here for a longer period of time? Yes, but don't ask me what it is right now because I'd be pulling. It okay, out of my ass. no, I, I just need <laughs> no, no. I just I just need to know that it exists uh, yeah. and it's not like yeah. we're, we're we're not meddling with forces beyond our ken. It uh, happens because I'm the GM and says it can happen. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Ishmael hears you, nods, uh, and says, admittedly, I'm not an expert on the green sun. I am more of the angelic expert, but I I believe that's achievable. Uh, Songbird, and when he says the name out loud, realizes it doesn't tug uh, I'm assuming at his soul, so Absolutely it's not, not the true name. No. Mm -hmm. That he has 
done too many times now at this point, uh, knowing the true names of things. And he kind of goes, I'm assuming that it's not their true name. Do you know what their true name is? They don't remember their name. Just why I've been researching. That's why uh. he's here. And then Ishmael realizes that you're here because you need help finding the true name. And Ishmael's like, Okay, this makes the job a little difficult, but we will figure it out. Hmm. As Ishmael thinks, uh, he gets up from his uh, office and he says, All right, two pairs of eyes are better than one. Come, we're going to go research. There must be other instances of Goetics that know how to deal with true names within the green sun let's go uh and he like gets up and you see the long flowing black robes like a black kurta with a deep golden dupata that he wears uh uh slung off his shoulder and uh he walks briskly out of his office uh to the halls of Re the hall of records to try and look up for uh the approaches because i i like to think that goetic styles also differ from like each sun uh, so, like, if you were an expert in the civil sun, like, it's probably more bu bureaucratic the way you handle true names and summoning and things like that. Uh, so he's looking for uh, the element of green sun to see and look up the approaches of other goetics in their summoning of uh, green sun inhabitants. So what I'd like one of you to do, to, it could be one or both. Or one or the other, one can help and give an extra plus one Bene to uh, a plus one bonus. Uh, roll to find this information, but to see how long it takes. Because the information you're looking for is in the Goetic Hall of Records. <sighs> so many records. So, Would you like to do it, Ray? Uh, I feel like Ray is a stranger to these records compared to Ismail. So I think it'd be wiser. Ray is the extra eyes, extra hands, and uh, the the big boy can move. Uh, despite big boy can move. <laughs> big boy can move, so he can like glance, keep going. <laughs> you, you can help Ishmael reach uh, for a record because he's he's definitely shorter than you. He's like mm -hmm. five member correct. He's five ten. Uh, Ishmael is. So, yeah, okay, I can make the roll. I will probably expend a Bene for this. Uh, would this be intellect, intellect. or would the, yes. or perception? Oh, okay, this, sorry, this would be a perception. Um, also, yeah. since you are a third degree Goetic, you, and from the last campaign, you technically have uh, expansive endeavor, so you can use up to three Bene. Yes, I can use up to three Bene. Uh, I will not. I don't think I would require it, but I would like to uh, expend a hidden knowledge because I know the Hall of Records mm -hmm. so well that I should be able to find it. Sure. What else am I going to use? I didn't use my hidden knowledge very much in the first campaign, but I still use it now. <laughs> so, I use, I, so I have a plus one from that, plus one from hidden knowledge. I've got a plus two. And a plus one from Ray helping. And plus one from Ray helping. That makes it uh, a ten total because I rolled a seven on the die. Okay. So it it's pretty quick. Um, for once, the journeymen have been put to work in organizing the records. It is well organized. There are not five million books on the floor or where they're not supposed to be or hidden in the back of a shelf, like on the top where you can't see it in the corner. And you are able to find a book. Uh, it is it has no title. On the inside, though, it does have the following. Um, the Journeys of N. Blackthorn, volume 16. Ooh. Uh, so, Ishmael, uh, I imagine that you had, it was like on a higher shelf, and Ishmael like, asked you to help him uh, reach for it. He opens it up, uh, and he sees that this is Journeys Volume 16 of the Journeys of N. Blackthorn. Uh, and he, this is this is a very cute moment of Ishmael where you see his eyes glowing glitter as he like got his hands on this and he begins skimming and reading through it. And you see the serpents come up to his face and also at looking at the book uh, inquisitively as he's reading it. Uh, and as he reads this, he says, 
I think we have found a very good lead. And he will uh, gesture to uh, a desk. I'm sure there's plenty in the Hall of Records. Oh, plenty. Uh, plenty. And he sits opposite you, uh, like right next to you, Ray, and opens up this journal. And he says, so this is the collections, the writings of Anne Blackthorn, uh, or commonly known as Nat, uh, or Nathaniel, or Natalie. Uh, they were, these collections seem to date from before the war, so uh, this is very, very old information. And they are an explorer of the suns and have a friendly relationship with entities. Uh, in fact, and he moves the page, uh, he uh, takes a look at the... Uh, there's like I, a graph or something or like a type of diagram that's drawn to kind of like indicate the stylings of how the summoning circle that is familiar to specifically Blackthorn. And they say, and he says, so over here, it seems that the way that Nat has written their circle, you can see through these four points, it is very, very defined names being put in. So that indicates that they only summon creatures they know the true name of. Very difficult to do. Very, very difficult to do. But none of these, uh, none of these seem to be an extremely restrictive circle, which means that uh, Blackthorn had a immense amount of faith in the entities that they were summoning. Um, and it was most likely reciprocated. Uh, and you see him, like, push the pages more and more to find more and more information. Uh, and, he's, and he says, oh, that's very interesting. Would you like to hear what you found? Uh, yes, go ahead. All right, sit your butts down. <laughs> this volume seems to document Blackthorn's tour exploration of the night side of green. Specifically, the entire book itself. The entry towards the beginning starts off as so. I find myself in the nightside realm of green for the next stop in my journey. Like green, the nightside is expansive with life, growing and growing to the furthest reaches of the land. Like all the other suns, it is a world full of ravenous danger, but also so much beauty as well. And also like all the other sons, in order to explore and wander, I must speak with I must speak and be granted permission from the warden, Demagon. Demagon is a large bestial and demonic entity, large horns of a goat and a long dark beard, not unlike a satyr. Vines and plants and moss entangle around his robes and body, seemingly moving of their own accord. He towered over me, his moist breath dampening my clothes and hair as it rolled into the thick underbrush. My task, he told me, was to close off any leech world I found during my stay. A simple enough task, in my opinion. Much more preferable than giving up my jacket and silver. And so, with the colloquy with Demogun over, I made my way into the opposing jungle to see what I could find. I could go on and on about my time here, the plants I studied, the creatures I befriended, but I want to specifically mention a friend I made along the way. When I first met them, they were entangled with a tree, their bright green vines wrapped around branches, and the purple-tinged thorns pierced deeply into the bark. The tree looked ill. It clearly was having its energy and nutrients drained by the plant connected to it. I almost paid it no mind, cautiously walking around it and over roots before the plant shifted and greeted me in my mind. It wasn't the first creature that I met that could speak directly to an individual's consciousness, so I wasn't surprised. What did surprise me, though, was how pleasant this entity was. You know me. I've said it multiple times before. If it's not trying to kill me and it wants to talk, I'm more than happy to hold a conversation. We talked about Nightside the plants and animals that it saw, other creatures that this entity has met, animals and plants that it has seen pass into the pale. The fervent voice of its experiences and desire to see more resonated with my own, 
And in that instance, I recognized its loneliness. And as always, the creature that I am, wanting to assist and please, asked this vine their name, explaining that I could help them see other places, if only temporarily. That I could summon them to another sun, and they can see and hear and learn more. I felt a surge of joy and excitement, quickly tempered by contemplation, before Vili returned. They told me its name was Cascada Striga, and they were happy to meet me. And then the rest of the entries go into the rest of N. Blackthorn's Nightside Green journey. Does Ray's face betray them? Uh, betray him? He... The same way Victor's did? <laughs> Val, I only play people whose faces are of open book because I don't know how to like keep it tempered. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, there's it. It definitely goes when whenever the first the first entity is mentioned, Ray and Ray's like slowly come to the realization there is a dangerous look he has looked so very like sweet and um you know like in like very like oh thank you you know like a very very um what's it called like deferential and then like his shoulders square and he looks angry and then it shifts to like that softness again thinking about his friend and um before like you flip to like the next like like he 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 stops and he's like tapping on the page it's like I, i'm i'm sure that that's the name uh so like you when we yeah so you confirm that that's the name and then uh ishmael notes that look keeps it tucked away at the back of his head uh and he kind of gives you a very very soft smile points at that name and and smiles and says Looks like we find the name of your friend. Let's see about bringing them back over here, shall we? Yeah. Yes. Though I... It's gotta be special. They've been stuck for a long time. It's gotta... I have an art gallery. I have a showing, an art show. Um, at my home. I suppose I've heard of less strange places where... Uh, colloquies have happened as Ishmael remembers his interaction with an entity in the art gallery. Uh, Maybe you should mention that. Oh, and and where is uh? So when is this uh, art gallery? It's just in a. It's just in a couple days, and um. Uh, oh my Do god! Do you feel I prepared? That person's- Oh yes, I've been prepared. I've been I've made many amazing sculptures. And I am I am I I'm meant so for ready. the summoning ray. <laughs> oh. D- I mean, yes. All I I mean, I know how to do summonings. And you know, I'd have to talk to plant. Let's get what the plant needs. Maybe other plants. Um And he he nods. He's like, "Yes, I'm I, I make a lot of stuff. Not a maker, but like I, with work with my hands. The, the stamina for summoning, is not difficult. The things that I do, the things that I, do even outside of Goetica, requires a lot of. Body. <laughs> uh, so that I'm ready for it's. The knowledge that sometimes slips. Well, if there is a fine art gallery to be had, perhaps I can attend. Yes, of course. I was just about to invite you. Um, he should have invited himself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, above uh, the yeah. table, Mayor, really quick, I do want to mention the name Adistria that everyone sees. One more time. Is it Adastria Chauncey you're asking about? Yes. Yes. Uh, Miss Mix. Miss. Miss Chauncey is like, is, um, took over an art gallery, apparently after a murder. And is, and this show is for me to, uh, see if she can display my pieces there. 
Uh, <laughs> Ishmael has opened like a little thermos that he has uh, that smells of coffee that Ray, you would have picked up, smells like how you smell like when you entered his office. Um, has been packed for him. Uh, and as he takes a sip uh, and you said, because of a murder, you hear him go, <coughs> Huh. Oh, yes, uh, I am very, very familiar with Miss Chauncey. Uh, we have maneuvered around similar circles. That will that will do us nicely. <clears throat> Murder, they say. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> it was in the news. Oh, yep, I remember. <laughs> oh. Did it mention anybody in the in the news? Mayor, for me, for me, I need to know this. <laughs> A fiery-headed person, that's it. No, please don't kill me. <laughs> Ishmael, uh, <laughs> Ishmael uh, makes a note to himself. Roshni should not go to the Marquee Quarter for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, I think Ishmael, like on his way back from today's meeting with Ray, will uh, pop by whichever household Roshni finds themselves in for uh, the night and go, Hey, that's definitely not cool for me to enter the Marquee Quarter. <laughs> Right now, for a little while. This is still relevant. <laughs> all right. Sometimes you obliterate a man. That's all you need to know for there TSC. No, he does not exist, period, anymore. His soul is dead. Sometimes you remove a man completely from existence because he sucks. And... Anyway. And sometimes you help with that. It sort of adds new meaning to throw the whole man away, you know? <laughs> throw yes. the whole man away. Yes, actually. <laughs> But anyway, you have found your name and a couple days pass and it's time for your gallery. Would you like to introduce the scene for your gallery and how it's set up? And uh, when is everyone else arriving? At least for the main crew, are you arriving? Would you have invited them early, Ray? Oh, yeah. Like in case um, they, you know, so, so uh, especially because like I know Aspen likes parties, and so like Aspen being there before people, or being there later than people, both of them are an advantage. And Ray would be like, you can take either advantage. <laughs> um, but also because uh, he would have made his friends like little extra gifts ahead of the uh, ahead of the um, showing, the gallery showing. Um, uh, for Sephrona, it would have been, uh, like, what if, what if a walrus, right? What if a walrus, but, uh, octopus, uh, octopus body. Oh God. <laughs> I love it. I love that. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, for Lace, uh, Ray, Ray just, Ray just did like a sleepy cat with a flower for once. I love like Lace loves it. Lace and I think is Shard invited? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I Shard need to have a gambling cat. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> who doesn't need a gambling cat at all their events? But um I think Shard like Lace loves it and immediately is like shows Shard who is like just like it's perfect. Sniffing um, it. Loves it. Did you add catnip to this? Um, I wanted to see if it would be like an interesting glaze for you. It's perfect. It's absolutely yeah. perfect. It's just, it's just on the flower. It's just like a little light glaze. Needs more catnip. That's the only critique. I, I wouldn't take that personally. Shard says that about most things. Like the the piece itself is gorgeous. I just, I need my fix. <laughs> and special for Aspen. I think he I think Ray would have gone to Lace and I'm sorry that I didn't talk about this before. But about like when Aspen described um Helia. Oh, Helia to Lace and mm -hmm. Lace did like a drawing. I think Ray mm -hmm. tried to craft out as much as he could like a little clay thing of Helia. Um Aspen Aspen shows up wearing sunglasses um, for reasons to be explained. Um, but, oh God, Mare, did, 
do I does it look like Helio? Does it look like what I'm seeing is it everybody looks like right what now? you're seeing. No, <laughs> I can't even appreciate this in all its glory. Um, Aspen takes it and holds it like very gently and is like, This is gorgeous, Ray. And you'll notice that Aspen is not looking at your face. Um, Aspen is like kind of looking to the side. This well, is- you have sunglasses on, I can't tell. That's true. You're That's looking. true. Trying to tr- looking in your general direction. Uh, this, yeah. this is gorgeous. Um, I'm this. This looks. I'm sure just like the drawing. It's that me. I, it's me. It, isn't it wonderful? Does it look just like you? Yeah. And still saying this, looking at Ray, because Aspen is not going to turn and look at Helio right now either. Uh, we'll put this on your shelf. And uh, make sure that you can always see it and that I can always see it. Ray, thank you so much for this. Mm-hmm. Is um, Aspen just that person who is now wearing sunglasses indoors? We're all thinking it, right? I need to verbalize this. Aspen as an individual, yes. Um, but at this point, Aspen would kind of tuck the, um, uh, the sculpture away and take Ray's hand. And still not looking at Ray's face, say, I have gotten myself into a bit of a pickle. I know that you're you. I know who I'm talking to. But right now, your face is my face. Oh, Everyone's face is my face. I... It's you... very uncomfortable. Did you anger a witch? Um... Yes. Nothing quite so exciting. I, I tried to make something and it went very, very wrong. And I, I have been talking mirror. to myself for a week. This Everyone is an amazing I... opportunity for self-reflection. Not the kind of reflection that I want. I, there's not enough therapy in the world to prepare me for that. <laughs> I, I'm going to wear these sunglasses, but um, I could you... Could you just say your name so I know what everybody is wearing and I'm going to try and like clock the shoes so that I can kind of remember who it is that I'm talking to. Yeah, uh, Ray's like, well, I'm Ray. And like, he has an uncharacteristically nice shirt on. And then he like, and then he looks like he, like he pauses and he looks like he remembers something and then he takes out a tie. And he's just like, yes, and I will be wearing this. So you will know what it's <laughs> You, are, you, are you going to put on the tie right now? It seems like we're getting close to time. I we, this we don't have to put like it, it's a tie. It it won't take long. It's fine. All right. <laughs> I don't know if Sophrona and Lace want to yeah. describe what they're wearing. Aspen has a whole ass outfit that sure. I'm happy to describe. <laughs> Lace is wearing, um, I think a midnight blue dress um that is pretty shiny and matches shard's bow tie does shard also look like you yes incredible so this is just aspen's face aspen's face on a black cat we love we love to see it um and I think, yeah, I think whenever Lace speaks to you for the entire night, it's gonna it, it's gonna start with, "This is Lace speaking," um, and yeah, it's just kind of like a uh, lacy, no pun intended, at the top, um, over the shoulders, um, and then like silky dress empire cut all the way down, um, and the hair is blue still, so. It's very, very thematic in color. Um, well, Sophrona, she's always just very, almost like always too formal, just all the time. So it's just, this doesn't look especially special, but um, this time it's like a very like soft coral pink. Um, always like, you know, a little like Turno style Filip- Filipiniana dress, the little shoulders. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look especially special, but it is just to her. It's her fan. It's her fancy, fancy outfit. That to all of you, it just looks like her regular outfit. 
I'm gonna read the next card before we continue because I always forget. But on the green sun, I have the Raven value of six Secrets Ravens Books in Flame. Meanings, jealousy, sight, trickery. Companion to the Secrets family, the Raven sees everything and tells nothing. The Raven is smarter and wiser than it ever lets on. Its intelligence, however, manifests in its crafty solutions to problems. Some might use the word cheating, in fact. The Raven's weakness is greed and jealousy. It wants what you have, and that probably means your secrets. Can you keep them from its watchful eyes? Is it even worth trying? Uh, this is a companion card, meaning it duplicates the effects of the last card, meaning red magic is enhanced and blue is hindered. Um, while you are all talking and having this conundrum, that talking about Aspen's conundrum, uh, Ray, your agent, your assistant, for this specific showing, Reyna is walking around doing last minute checks for snacks. So everyone else sees this uh, black individual who today is wearing a very long, like yellow dress with a slit up the side. And today their form is of beautiful layered watercolors. That is what they look like. Um, as a reference for everybody, all my players, when you are talking to Reyna, Reyna uses your character's pronouns. So I will be switching it up. <laughs> uh, please forgive me. There's a lot of pronouns on the screen. But uh, Reyna uses whoever uh, they're talking to their pronouns. But they are currently putting out the rest of the drinks. And before they check their watch and head over to the door... She, they open it, and there's Donahue with donuts, the donut cart. So uh, the donut cart is coming in, but there's drinks. There is snacks set up like picnic or buffet style, along with just doing a last minute check set all your pieces. They don't stick around too much, but they do wave, say hello, hello, before going on. They are busy. A uh, quick question before anything. When I came in, how did the bog look like especially these flowers what does it look like there's a lot of flowers there is a uh. lot of flowers uh much more than when you saw it last time it does look like however that trudy is making sure they do not leave the perimeter of ray's bog it is staying within the confines of his home okay and for her kindness i threw a shovel into her yard <laughs> yeah you did a cursed shovel <laughs> I did it. In, I did it in the dark. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure th that she'll get rid of it quickly. That's how I got to him anyway. Yep. But a uh, couple minutes more pass by, and Raina comes up to you, Ray. Ready? Guests should be arriving in ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Ready. 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 Did 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 you Wait. did you want help with? No, I'm I'm a grown person uh, i'm just and this is how you tie a tie right it's just it's a, it looks great uh, uh, bow tie looks great both personality aspen mm -hmm. is going to walk forward and just let me just adjust a little bit and side note kian used to do this when i was younger i, I learned how to tie ties because i thought it was fun um yeah. but aspen is going to just very gently just tie a single knot um and just say it, it looked wonderful it just needed a little bit of some finishing touches. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Above the table, Vic doesn't remember how to tie ties, and I always need a video to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Big mood. Uh, Ishmael, you are free to arrive whenever you are ready. Though, however, I do think there is one individual who does arrive early, like five minutes early. There is no knock at the door, but the the door just opens before impossibly, impossibly, a very large shark the size of a bus slips through the door into your home, Ray, starting to swim around in the air, very big mouth spotted in dark blue. Uh, it's your buddy, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, my whale shark friend. Thought I'd invite him. It's good to get out. Hello, friends. Thank you for the invite. I'm very you excited. You look 
so nice. Do, do you like my top hat? Of course. I do. I think it suits you so well. The the shimmer with the scales. Can I peek behind Bruce real fast? See if there's like scan the horizon, see if there's anybody following him. Anybody I recognize? Yeah, there's like the door hasn't shut yet, but it's down the street. But you Ugh. see a bright, literal gold colored hair walking down the street, which you recognize as Yasser. Okay. It's none, 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 nobody bothering. Nobody's usually, bothering Bruce. No weird suitors. No, no weird suitors. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's fine. I, that's put, fine. I put shard on security detail just in case. Oh, you, you said shard on security detail. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Beans. Cool beans. Yeah. I'll get I'll get Bruce in out of line of sight of the street. <laughs> we don't want I don't want anybody realizing he's here. Are those little uh, croissant wrapped wiener dogs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're so good. Here, have seven. Thank you. Uh, the uh, it's funny in shadow. These are called otters in a blanket. I don't know. That's really funny. I like yes. it. Like, I don't know enough about Shadow to dispute that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember shit. Sephora doesn't remember shit. She's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Ray is convinced that he is correct. Absolutely. But Ray remembers nothing about animals of Shadow. Um, I will wait by the door, door for you, sir. I don't know what I'm going to do there, but I will just wait there for no reason. I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> Eventually, uh, your fellow order member, Yasser, an Indian man wearing a almost very contrast to Ishmael, like literally Ishmael's opposite, a very bright gold kurta with accents of green and orange and red with literal gold colored hair, like actually made out of gold, always braided. Uh, uh, a little disgusted walks through the front door because his shoes are covered in muck. Ah, yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, hi. Sorry. I wasn't expecting to get wet. Yeah, it's... It's a bog. A I... marsh. I don't really know. Um, sorry. Hello. Uh, and this individual walks up to you, Ray, and holds out his hand to you. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. Nice to meet you, sir. And, uh, Person, yes, sir. And then, like, uh, Bruce is on, like, very excitedly, <laughs> uh, shakes Yasser's hand. Sorry to just show up out of the blue. A friend of mine is a friend of one of the folks who works at the gallery, so I heard it was an open house, so I wanted to come check out your work. Yes, uh, please. And, like, I think the first work that Yasser would see is, uh, right behind Ray. It's the centerpiece of the whole room. Um, and it is a uh, two-headed uh, shark. Um, it is, it, one head is like a hammerhead, and the other one is a goblin shark. And wrapped around like the main body of the sharks are uh, twisted familiar vines that all of us have seen in our dreams and visions, uh, but they are simply carved. They are not real um, with uh, purple uh, little, they're not called spikes on plants, but I'm going to say that they're thorns? called spikes. They're thorns. <laughs> there we go. And, uh, and like uh, the flowers that I'm used that that I'm used to seeing in my dreams, um, and again, like none of these thorns look like they're piercing the shark. Again, like the shark just looks like it's being like almost swaddled and like caringly lifted by these vines. And again, it's two weird fucking looking shark heads just like twisting up. It's a it's an enormous piece. It would have taken a very long time for Ray to fire, um, but it is. Uh, that is the, the main centerpiece of the room. Both of these sharks also have my face. Yeah. It's horrifying. Oh I thought it was only God. alive. Thing. No. <laughs> Everything. Is... Not if it's carved or anything. If it has a face, it has your face. 
Aspen is looking up at the sculpture and whoever is, is nearby just says, if you know anybody who can take away curses, I would really appreciate it. I didn't prep my hex thing. I don't think um, it works, but... This is Lace here. Um, we could probably, like, I'm sure there's somebody, you know, in a room full of a fair number of magical people, statistically, someone in this room at some point tonight can probably take away curses. That is true. There are a couple of them that I don't want to cross paths with. So uh, let's keep this to personal contacts tonight. People oh, we are. Okay. I just, I mean, if you can live with this, then that's totally up to you. This could be a new way of life for you. Oh, I desperately hope not. And Aspen has not looked at Bruce the entire time because that is terrifying to them. <laughs> the largest Aspen face. <laughs> uh, Ishmael, when do you arrive? I think Ishmael, I like to imagine that Ishmael and Yasser got there at the exact same time. They arrived at the threshold of the bog at the exact same time. I'm sure Kiran is also in attendance Kiran as is Ishmael's plus sense. one. Because uh, Ishmael invited himself to invite him Kieran as well. Uh, and I think as Yasser decided to brave, brave soul, just brave the walk uh, into the bog, Ishmael like, would have looked to Kieran and go, don't say another word. Don't say another word. I have a solution. He is dressed so ostentatiously. He is wearing a long black kurta with like, very light gold embroidery and then a deep red tupata that he swings off of his shoulder uh and it's gorgeous too fancy to be in a bog but i did remember ishmael has a very funny spell uh and it is sparrow's essence that i will cast uh it is a level four spell I become a sparrow and I can fly and I am small and fast. Uh, <laughs> so Ishra will turn himself into a sparrow, sit on Kiran's shoulder, uh, and just tweet very happily for Kiran to ferry him across. Uh, Kiran is this uh, very <laughs> handsome individual with very messy, bedheaded, like slightly curly brown hair and light brown skin with beautiful hazel eyes, wearing like not as ostentatious outfit, uh, very similar to Ishmael's, but like in a dark gray. And they just look at you and like, really, really. <laughs> you uh, then can <laughs> confronted with a cat who's working the door. Mm -hmm. uh, Ishmael tweets very happily and as we arrive at the door we're confronted by the cat will the cat attack me no. small cute sparrow no, okay. he will not uh, and we'll fly a little ahead till he's close to Yasser and then pop out and then hop down as Ishmael and is clean <laughs> and unbothered Yasser gives you a dirty look but does not say anything uh, and he Ishmael knows you're just doing it for uh, to piss him dick. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and Ishmael uh, kind of, like sees Ray and says, "Hi, Ray. Uh, I've arrived. Uh, please meet my partner. This is Kiran. Um, Kiran, this is Ray. Uh, I've Whoa. mentioned. Ishmael our... is very smart and kind. <laughs> Aspen, I can't remember if I told you, but you would know of Ishmael. Okay." Uh, but n have never met personally, I'm guessing? Probably not face-to-face. -face. Uh, same with you, Ishmael. You would probably know of Aspen. I don't know if you... I don't think you would know each other, like, personally. But yeah. you've been to some high-profile parties. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and, okay, knowing that uh, Ishmael, like, like shakes your hand, Ray, and is like, you're very, very kind. Uh, and looks around at all of your sculptures. These are gorgeous. You're extremely talented. Thank you. It's, um, I had, um, I, I remember a little bit about, um, you know, clay workings and everything, and animals have always been fascinating. Uh, yeah, Ishmael is like, he really does enjoy art. He was just looking at all the, the different animals that you have as sculptures, and he loves them all, and he looks to your friends that are probably just around the same vicinity as you. It's like, Hello, 
I take it that you are all race companions. I'm Ishmael Kadir, owner of the Guetica. How do you do? Just fine. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, Aspen has a... Uh, don't be bothered by the extremely... Aspen. Just, there's a... He's got a curse thing happening right now. Kid and like butts in Please. a little bit. Visley, bullshit. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. I hope it's. I can't see me. anyone's faces right now, but you all sound lovely. So, best of luck. <laughs> uh, did did you say it was a curse? Sorry, I'm just check, double checking that. I, I yeah, heard yeah, that. yeah. I yeah. said there's a little curse thing going yeah. on right now. After Aspen uh, specifically said, "Can we keep it?" <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ishmael hearing that is like, Aspen, I believe we have met very briefly before and like uh, takes your hand and shakes it uh, if you extend it. Um, and he says, Curse, um, we have a companion that if deals with available. that. If they're available, if you're available to see if they're available. I don't know if I... Electo has changed their moniker yet, but... Oh yeah, that's true. They haven't changed their monic. I don't know. Don't know how long it takes. We'll double check. Lore check. <laughs> I'm sure that they would be more than amicable. I will make myself available. Yes. Let me know when and where. Uh, yes. Um, they hang around. Uh, I will say, uh, the store right next to ba Babao's. Uh, Baba's dumplings, uh, sharing the same space as uh, Ravi's. There That's where you'll find them. It'd probably be best if one of us brought you over. Their door moves around a lot. Or you could just wing it like I do most of the time. Just around. I think just See, to add a little I bit of you. like uh, flair about what Ray's house is like, I think when Kieran mentions that their door moves around a lot, out of the corner of their eye, they're pretty sure a door is where it wasn't before. <laughs> uh, see, and you didn't want me to tell anybody. See, now he, you, you can see people's faces again, maybe someday, eventually. I'll let you have that one. Please don't tell anybody else. I'll try to restrain myself. I appreciate it. <laughs> I will bite um, her if she does. I appreciate it, Shard. Good night. Are you supposed to be working right now? No. While this is happening, can I kind of like surreptitiously see if there are any plants inside? Yes. You don't need to surreptitiously look around. The answer is yes. <laughs> oh. My house is half sunken into the bog. So like there's areas of the house that are like further away from the... Uh, from the, cause, cause Ray will like sleep underwater if he wants to, um, in the bog. Uh, but like there is like a area like further back that sort of like slants downwards. You can see like where the bog is in the house, covered with flowers. Oh yikes! They're also growing out of like cracks as well between stones. Mm. It's oh, so, so pretty. Looks, it is pretty. They're really, they're really pretty. Yes. Question for you, Victor. Um, how many of these sculptures incorporate the vines and flowers thing? Or is it just like the one centerpiece? Or is it like, how many? Of I them have are? a vulture that has, uh, for its head at the end of its neck, is a uh, one of, is like a, a sort of like bunch of these flowers um, that have grown out of the bog. Uh, I have a horse, uh, but like its mouth is like elongated so it opens up way too way too far like an alligator mouth with like really sharp fangs um six legs and eyes all over its body but the eyes sort of open up like the middle of the petals um and that's definitely what a that's definitely what a deer looks like uh he has titled it deer um there's a bear but its tummy is its mouth um and it's and it's it has like a it has like a smiley mouth and then like a mouth in its belly um but doesn't have any plant stuff 
And then there's like a trio of butterflies that are also sharks and they are sitting upon a uh, a uh, one of the plants, like a carved version of the plant. And then there's a shark that is just also, what if a porcupine was a shark? Do, do you still uh, have the plaque up for the eel wolf? That's empty. Um, n- no, he, he would have taken it down. Like he has a strangely empty, like little spot. Um, that he just tries to make people push past. Just like above table, I feel like now's a good time to mention that's the front of shadow item is a pair of gardening shears. <laughs> <laughs> I feel um, like I should mention that. Um, I think just above table. <laughs> Lace, who is in love with Ishmael's outfit and thus <laughs> and and feeling like perhaps Ishmael is just like used to being a lot as a person lace can relate so um, <laughs> yes. yes yes so so lace is going to i think at some point lean over towards like ishmael while they're looking at a piece of art and say maybe don't touch the flowers maybe they're evil we're not sure yet <laughs> maybe just maybe just don't touch the flowers you would think after several months of the strangest set of adventures that I've ever been on that I can no longer be surprised by a sentence. That is incorrect. <laughs> I will endeavor to not touch the flowers. I the mean, realistically, if the flowers are evil, they'll probably touch you. But, you know, just it's best to be cautious. Does this perhaps have anything to do with Ray's matter? <laughs> e- it, it has a large amount, to, a very large amount to do with that, yes. I, after, after taking a survey, I, I imagine the survey would have taken a hot second. Um, I'm gonna go up to Lace, who's been the person I've been what the helling at, and I'm gonna be like- Commiserating with you. Yeah, yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab their, their elbow and be like, you will get shocked by this because I touched your elbow. It's um, can I, Lace can takes I, it. Can I, can I, can I borrow you for a second? Just a hot second. Certainly. Thanks. Enjoy the art. I go off to court. Um, I don't know if you've noticed all the, I mean, I'm sure you've noticed all the plant things. I haven't had a chance to tell you before, but you know, when we were at, when we were at Elias's, you know, with the, uh, with Hector, uh, I guess with my little spell, you know, um, I haven't had time to show you, but Vines, when I look at them, you know, when I look at them, I see roots going someplace, just like invisible roots. I'm not going to cast it now. I imagine I won't be able I, to see it at this point. I believe you. Um, they kind of converge on Ray. I'm not sure what to do with this information. I think Lace takes a very long moment of silence and then just quietly to herself, like more curious than anything, says, maybe raise the villain. Um, but I I have not known what to do with this information. And I have well, had time. So but now that we're here and I can see it in the in- Well I should say, because Val, you are new. Um, when when Lace accuses people of being the villain, it's nothing personal. Um, she she does it to herself more than villain. anything. Um, maybe I am the bad guy. Um, <laughs> are you but, the drama? Okay. Maybe you're the drama. I'm definitely the <laughs> drama. <laughs> um, but I, I think I think Lace just says, well. We're agreed. So these roots aren't physical. They're magic and mental. They're They're like extensions of the physical roots. How do you... Seems bad. Seems Seems real bad. I mean, we we Um, did establish last time the... Hector told us the vines were parasitic. I have that in my notes. That's true. Yeah, Hector did say. Um, Well... We need to, but 
if we tell well we're gonna have to tell ray right we're gonna have to tell ray but 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 when we tell ray ray is gonna say well maybe they're not evil roots and then we're gonna say no they're definitely evil roots and then ray's gonna say it's gonna be a whole thing it's gonna be a whole thing i mean i'm not i don't have a solution to this problem but i just need to voice the problem aloud yeah Um, we're, we're gonna repeat the drusera dining room thing that's what's gonna happen right yeah well, the there thing is, because is you... the door. <laughs> we're just standing in the corner while smooth jazz. We're just standing happens. in the corner. Like, Lace has, like, a plate piled with the little croissant things and is just, like, nibbling on them as this happens. Yeah, we're going to do um, that for the next two minutes while people arrive. <laughs> um, just... As there is a knock on the door, uh, Reyna actually goes to go get it. And actually does the same thing that you're doing, Ray. Just, like, fixes his, uh, like, his dress and, like... Make sure his hair is all like nice and spick and span before opening the door. And you, you know that voice that, hi, it's so wonderful for you to make it. The customer service voice. It is on. And a group of people are there that have entered. There are, let me count how many individuals there is. One, two, one, two, three, four. I think it's four. Uh, four individuals that are uh, standing there. The first one at the head of the group is a woman probably about average height. She has long green hair and a couple translucent like uh, small like, kind of like dragonfly wings sticking out of her back and she is just wearing not a dress surprisingly actually wearing like good like sturdy cowboy boots and overalls which is Aspen, you've never seen her in, period. Same for you, Ishmael. This is Adastaria Chauncey, and she is not dressed like she's going to a high-end gallery. She looks like she is dressed for a bog. Uh, Well. (laughs) Next to her is a young mass-presenting man with very slick back brown hair, fair skin, wearing a, not dressed for a bog, but uh, except for the shoes, which you would know, Ishmael, is Kay, Eleanor's <gasps> partner. And right next to Kay is Eleanor. Uh, she has short white hair, very similar facial features to Frona to Emery. You would know this as Emery's sister, and she is wearing a very nice, prim and proper red dress. And last but not least is one other individual, which y'all don't know. But she is a tall black woman with gold, one, a golden eye patch on one eye and long, curly, orange gold hair. And she's wearing a kind of like a monarch butterfly patterned dress. You, Ray, would probably know, or at least by process of elimination, know this as Titania Romulus, who Sifrona and Reina told you was coming. She was the last exhibitor at the ink blot the same exact night that the murder happened. <laughs> and I don't know they, what anyone's talking about this murder that happened. I don't know what, murder. what about. This, this is murder. This murder that happened. And um, this group enters. And I was going to actually go to right to break if that's okay. If you had something super quick, go for it. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Let's just go to break. Okay. I was going to introduce myself. <laughs> We're going to go to break, everybody. We'll be back in five to, mi- t- five to ten minutes. Please rest, pet your pets, hydrate, and we'll be back soon. Bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. We are back from break where the gallery is about to go underway. The main bulk of all of the visitors and gallery, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Viewies are here. Hey, you got your tie. Hell yeah. Ray figured it out. <laughs> um, before we get started, I'm going to ru- read the next card of the game on the blue sun. On the blue sun, I have pulled the Savage Sword. Value of three, vision, swans, blades, and water. Meanings war, savagery, strength, violence, and brute force. The sword is a weapon of war, a metaphor for any kind of weapon one might wield. The Savage Sword is our 
basest nature, our predilection towards violence and our shameful bloodlust. But it is also our strength to overcome obstacles and foes when we need to. It is the opposite of thought, strategy, or consideration. It is immediate and decisive without hesitation or regard for consequences. The savage sword is the opposite of the revealing knife in most respects. Red magic is enhanced and blue is hindered. Empaths get a plus one to their ventures. Let's go, baby. <laughs> we, right before break, we left off with a small group arriving at Ray's home. Uh, when the door is opened by Reyna, she is immediately partially embraced by this woman with long green hair and dragonfly wings. And they do the the, the two the two cheek kiss. Kiss, kiss. Side. Yeah, they do the kiss, kiss. And <laughs> Adestrea speaks. Darling, this is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for hosting. And this must be the beautiful artist. And she kind of like drifts over to you, Ray, and holds out a hand to you. Um, and Ray has practiced to not be weirdly deferential, at least to Adestrea. And so he squares up his shoulders. He makes himself tall, but not intimidating, hopefully and takes Adestrea's hand and is like, welcome to my home. Thank you so much for coming to view my art. Uh, she shakes it. It's not super firm, but just definitely a, definitely a comfortable firm handshake. It is wonderful to meet you. I'm Adestrea Chauncey. Um, I will, I'm the new owner of the ink blot, as I'm sure as Reina has told you. And she inclines her head over at Reina. Uh, this is my assistant and one of my curators at the exhibit. And she motions to Kay, who has their partner Eleanor on the, uh, their arm. Eleanor n nods at you, Ishmael, and Kitten. You and Kitten. Uh, and this is Titania. Titania was the last exhibitor at the Ink Blot, who is just here to peruse and is a friend of mine. It's nice to meet you, Titania. I uh, I was told you might stop by and I I want I, I looked at some of your pieces and they're very impressive. Thank you so much. I find inspiration at the most oddest of moments and work very hard to bring my vision to life. <laughs> I can relate. Um if you looked into her you would have known that her pieces at the ink plot were focused and made out of materials from the gold sun. And what was interesting about her exhibit is they talked about a bunch of different types of love, platonic, sexual, romantic, so on and so forth. And when an individual looked at it, they saw the epitome of that type of love or emotion. Ooh. It wasn't just love. It was a bunch of different emotions. And that's that was really cool. Yeah. So yeah, Ray is very sincere when he's like, that's, it's very, very impressive. Very interesting. Um, Eleanor actually breaks, uh, gives Kay a kiss and breaks off to actually go talk to Yasser. You are saved, Ishmael, from having to deal with. I was your going neighbor. to give. I was going to be nice and give uh, the peacement spell, but that's okay. Now, now Yasser can be going and be happy. It's all right. <laughs> um, Adestrea looks at everyone else and gives you a couple nods in everyone's directions before walking up to you, Ishmael. And if you will allow it, kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss. Oh, Ishmael is so practiced with this. Absolutely, kiss, kiss. And he's just kind of like, Adestrea, it is so lovely to see you here. It is wonderful to see you too, my dear. A little overdressed this time around, but beautiful as a always. Title of a a tad of a dress. I was not quite aware of the venue, but uh, we made it work. After all, the gifts of the Visley. <laughs> if I knew you were coming, I would have given you a warning. <laughs> it was a... Uh, I've only recently been acquainted with uh, the young Ray over there uh, through the Order uh, and was afforded an invitation. It was a very, very spur of the moment, spontaneous thing. Aspen, what are your reactions? What is your outward reactions? Aspen, um, like full composure. The schmoozing and just acting as though they are in their element. Um, it is like not even 
doing their best and a damn good job of not reacting to the fact that they only see their face, but not approaching Adestrea, not approaching anybody, but definitely kind of doing the lounging off to the side to show like, I am here, I am listening. I'm not going to approach you unless you approach me. Okay. Uh, Lace and Sophrona. Still in the corner, right? <laughs> we are st- very much still in the corner. Okay. Talking about pan over. Where are you at in your I, conversation? I feel like at this point, it, it just cuts to Lace going, fiery explosion. And it would if it would just be really, it would be, I don't, I don't know that that's the answer, but when we think destroy plants, like that's, you know. I can't confirm they burn. They, they burn. Well, how do you? I can confirm they burn. <laughs> this, this. I just they don't do. know. Ideally, we should find a different solution to that because setting Ray on fire feels like not the correct solution to yeah. this problem. Um, but I wonder. I wonder if maybe. Instead of, you know how sometimes your friends have to learn lessons for themselves instead of, you know, like you teaching them lessons? I'm not saying we leave Ray to it. I'm just saying maybe we can't prevent him wanting to bring this songbird over. Like, I don't have... I don't have a compelling argument to convince Ray that his lifelong friend is a parasite. It's true. My only worry is that this will be a lesson inflicted on everybody. I don't- I- you're not wrong. Well, I guess, I mean, we don't know- we don't know even know that Ray has a plan. Right? It's, it's there, true. There we no we don't. Plan. It could be no plan. We don't. I don't know anything. We don't it's know. Fine. It'll it's probably fine. be we fine. Get, it's, it's fine. Because uh, I'm, I'm assuming that we don't know that. We don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know, know shit. I mean, I I told Ishmael that it's possibly evil plants, but other than that, like, we don't know that there this, is a plan. That could be just your paranoia talking. You don't know. We don't yeah. know. We don't it could it's probably gonna be fine. It's probably it's it's fine. We should we should, we should go back. We should monitor we should. the situation. We should get more croissants. We should. That's what we should do. We should get some more croissants. Or 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 says Shard. A donut. Oh, oh yes. yeah, you could have a uh, yeah, but did you uh I'm surprised they're already left, frankly. They're really tasty. Yeah. Oh, I, I think Don Hugh made a lot. Like a oh, lot. Okay. And I also don't smell swan on him, so he didn't get probably didn't get ambushed by swans this time. That's good. That's good. That's an improvement. Okay, I think I think the most we can do now is just keep a really close eye on on the plants, on the plants, on Ray. Just because I don't, I don't, I don't know what the timetable is for anything. I don't know how. Probably Ray is going to do lots of considered research before anything else happens. <laughs> Ray, like that. I don't I don't know how good Ray it wouldn't works, just so. summon <laughs> an unknown creature in the middle of a party filled with lots of innocent people. I don't. Ray, <laughs> while, while you're having this conversation, um the group that just arrived begin to mingle, uh, look around, begin looking at the exhibit. Eventually, a couple more people arrive, one being William Ballant, Aspen, your your maker friend, elder maker friend, and a familiar wrong cat who just gently walks over the top of the bog with only like the little bottom of their hand, feet, paw pads getting wet. Um, but when she arrives, she does, like, grab a napkin, like, leans up onto, like, the buffet table, grabs a napkin, and, like, wipes her hands off and her feet, like a very polite individual would do. 
uh, Ray is happy to say hello to William. And also, uh, when Miss uh, Nussle gets there, uh, Ray does produce a final gift, which is just a, a, a very small likeness of Miss Nussle. Thank you so much, dear. It's beautiful. Yes. If you wouldn't mind tying it to my collar for me so I can carry it. With ah, hands see, and that's why I have this little metal piece here. And um, <laughs> he just has a string that he ties like to Miss, uh, <laughs> Miss Nussle's um, collar. Uh, you all see this wrong cat, this hairless cat with eight eyes, a centipede tail, suspicious looking stripes and human hands and feet talking with Ray. Um, she does walk around the exhibit and does and also views everything, keeping her comments to herself. But when she does pass you, Ishmael, she does give you an up and down with all eight eyes and just barely you can hear like with your with your ears compensating for something I see <laughs> before continuing on I am <laughs> you're muted Israel just like hands his gaze over to Kiran who's probably like right by him oh she's it's like Kiran's chuckling trying to hold like, in their not, laughter not you as well <laughs> my side <laughs> my side <laughs> i don't hear any of you say anything about yasser <laughs> they just pat your cheek <laughs> lovingly <laughs> sometimes you do need to be taken down a couple pegs you wound me <laughs> I'll go make friends with Yasser then, if that will please you. Up to you, my dear. Uh, you see, you see Ishmael like sigh, like this is the most laborious thing he's had to do in the entirety of his life. Two months ago, he nearly died. Not nearly died. He, he did, did die. die. I did, did die. I took a very brief visit to the pale. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but but he's thinking this is even more laborious than death, uh, basically. <laughs> Dying's easy. Getting along with coworkers is hard. Your neighbor who has an amphitheater who tells stories really loudly in his amphitheater home. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Ishmael will mosey on over to Yasser. Uh, and greet him um while they're well he's looking at some uh he's looking because i think eleanor bear. is also there eleanor the bear also, oh, I... also eleanor is also mingling but yeah oh looking eleanor at is also there uh, i will i refuse to role play my past players characters <laughs> that is fair i'm like that's fair eleanor <laughs> is there uh, she absolutely and is yeah, Ishmael greets her, uh, hops over to uh, to Yasser. It's just engaging in small talk. It's just like, very lovely piece from the young Ray, isn't it? Ray has a lot of skill and a very strong imagination, bringing able to bring their visions to life. I agree. Uh, and Ishmael looks down at uh, poor Yasser, Yasser's feet that anything. are. <laughs> it's like. That is quite unfortunate. I'm quite surprised advance of your uh, skill hadn't a spell up your sleeve for the, this exact occasion. Not for this, unfortunately. Well, I do, it's just not prepared. But something uh, tells me I'm gonna have to talk to my Zillot cleaner to handle this one. It is very unfortunate. Let me make that experience a little bit. Okay. Uh, a little easier to deal with. And Ishmael will cast Exiguous Appeasement, my favorite spell. Uh, I will not be taking notes on this. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Exiguous Appeasement, uh, for those of y'all who do not know, uh, is a spell where the spellcaster conjures a little trifle that will please a specific nearby being they choose. It is impractical, inexpensive, super simple, uh, like a piece of your favorite candy, paper origami, uh, but it will be something that the person that's uh, being cast to would like. 
I just want to know this from me. <laughs> I want to know what tiny little thing right yes was. What appears in your hand is a cigarette. <laughs> my, my, yes, sir. For you? They take it. Not, don't say a fucking thing and put it in like an inner pocket. I'd like to think that Ishmael has hung around with uh, a particular individual enough to know the brand. Is it a, a, a similar Same like styling? Brand. Yeah. And I and Ishmael did indeed have a very, very intimate uh, knowledge of the scent of that smoke because summoning. Uh, don't say a and it's just fucking like, thing. I said nothing. Yes, sir. Uh, he has a, the most, the most like shit eating grin. <laughs> uh, seeing this, it's like, no, no, I won't say anything. I just quite understand your experience. That's all. Anyway, been busy at the order. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's been uh, quite the very, very busy being in the third degree. Uh, turns out the Order of Goetics have far more responsibilities, but easing back into it after my vacation. Yes. By the way, um, they look, he looks over at Kitten and gives you a look. When? Not now. <laughs> okay. At a window of time to be determined. If you need assistance arranging something suitable, let me know. That is very kind. Yes, sir. I don't do it I for you. I do it for Kitten. I am aware. <laughs> Ishmael sits uh, and uh, kind of <laughs> Ishmael's never gonna ask you about sort of this <laughs> but, but it's like I appreciate the offer and the kindness anything for a friend of mine anyway what do you think of this and they point to the bear oh it just reminds me of an entity I summoned I quite like bears I think this conversation goes a little bit actually yeah. into art. <laughs> into art, it, an in intellectual conversation that's not about how much these two are too similar to each other and that's why they hate each other. Not hate, mildly disliked, mildly annoyed. Uh, William Belond, after getting a plastic cup full of punch with like sherbet ice cream in it, it's that casual. Um, because from Raina was going off of Ray's vibes and it's just a very like backyard picnic type of, type of vibes for like buffets, like there's fruit. Uh, if, if it was a more formal thing, like dinner, there probably would be a grill <laughs> with like burgers and hot dogs, <laughs> but just finger foods. And William Balland actually comes up to you Aspen and takes like, are you sitting down or are you standing? I'm standing, I'm looking at one of the pieces. Something where the face is easier to not look at. Um, and William is looking up at the exhibit with you. Good evening, Aspen, how are you today? William, my dear, it is lovely to see you. Although I must admit, you don't look as nice as you usually do. When you've been around for a while, you you kind of know people and you get to recognize the houses. So, uh, I dress accordingly. Understandable. Um, and actually, I was speaking about something else because I have a problem, my dear friend, that perhaps you can fix for me. In the moment, I am not getting to look at your lovely face. I am looking at mine. And I love my face. I love knowing what I look like, but one person can only take so much and I'm even growing sick of myself. Did a, mis did a mishap happen? It did indeed. Mm. I was making something so simple 
I really didn't. I that's, thought that I had. That's and, when it usually happens. The simplest yeah. of projects. But a little too comfortable. And I've had some new acquaintances who have offered to perhaps help me with this, but I am checking with everybody because I am tired of this. I would need to, if I have anything, it's not on me right now, dear. Understandable. If I come by perhaps next week, could I see if you have anything available? If I haven't given it away, it's all yours. I appreciate it, dear. Thank you. My and I'm going to link My supplies arm. are getting a little thin. Is there anything I can acquire for you? No, not really. I'm just clearing out the storage before I die. William, how many times do I have to tell you? That is so far away. Hmm. He just like motions to himself old as shit. <laughs> if I had my way, dear, you would live forever. Maybe you can make uh, a deal with the Empress of the Pale for me. Well, um, you know, as you know, there will be a couple of conversations surrounding life and longevity and things, so... If I find something out, I will let you know. I appreciate it. Anyway. I'm going to Go link arms and just kind of stay with William, intentionally cir circling opposite of Adestraya. If we pass, it's going to be just a very casual. Like, oh, lovely to see you. So nice. And keep walking. I'm going to pull a card. For that? I'm pulling a card. On the Indigo Sun, I have pulled... Where the frickity frack is it? I pulled the Assassin. Mm, value of eight, Mysteries, Rats, Mirrors, and Stone. Finesse, Stealth, Betrayal, and Finality. Subtleness is the Assassin's greatest tool. Anyone can... Wait, this is an add-up card. Play another card, so... Hmm. <laughs> The enveloping, <laughs> enveloping no! darkness. No! No! Not this card! Uh, value of five, mysteries, rights, mirrors, and stone, restrictions, loss, endings. Dark isn't an absence of light. Light is an absence of darkness. Darkness is the default. It moves to fill any place the light abandons. The dark was the totality of the actuality before the suns existed. And according to many, the dark will be the totality again once the suns are gone. The darkness is the end. It takes things. It takes us. It grabs, constricts, and overwhelms everything not warded by the light. Invisible magic is enhanced, and Stoics get a plus one to it, uh, to their ventures. Hmm. Okay. Aspen. You get a joy. Because other than a general nod in your direction, Adestraya doesn't seem to recognize you. God. Oh. <laughs> um, but in one of these passbys, the uh, Adestraya comes up to you, Ray. She has a cup of like half filled with punch, like not too high, not too not too low, uh, and like a piece of fruit in her hand, like a watermelon slice. And she's like, so tell me a bit about, so tell me a bit about your thought process on this uh, scene for me. Like what made you want to make these pieces? Is there uh, besides animals a theme or is this just when inspiration strikes? Um, and Ray sort of like, Ray sort of gestures almost to, uh, again, this, the, the big, the the main piece is hanging from the ceiling right and i think through the uh through the like uh almost like through where he's drilled up this holder there's the beginning of flowers and um and i i like uh Ray's like loneliness is such a powerful motivator for art for connection to do what needs to be done. And um, my motivation to create uh, sort of began to stem from loneliness. Um, animals, 
are interesting, beautiful, powerful creatures with strange forms built up to survive. Um, and many of them, even through isolation, still thrive. Um, this is something he's definitely like was waiting for to get asked because he's using all of his big words. <laughs> um, and uh, when I first returned from Shadow after the war, uh, it was hard to make connections. It's a confusing time for a lot of people. Um, and uh, but uh, there was an entity. So, something that I connected with. Feelings at first, but over the years it's become words, ideas, um, visions, dreams. And it is beautiful. It is life. It's survival. Despite loneliness. So even though your initial inspiration was loneliness, Based off, obviously, the love and hard work you put into your pieces, you've also pulled from love and friendship. Yes. I think uh, friendship is one of the most um, beautiful things to seek and beautiful things to portray. This might be a little off subject, but also on subject. Were the flowers before or after part of your uh, original concept because I see they're growing everywhere and I don't know if it was just curious happenstance or you planned for it the flowers honestly happened around the same day that Reina came to speak with me about uh, the gallery so a good luck charm definitely they are definitely something special, I think. Yes, I actually um, planned a potential live viewing after the gallery. Uh, live viewing? What do you mean? Uh, well, you know, as an entity that could <laughs> speak with me, it's just... Um, a little hard to get into Saturday. I oh. see. You're making f friends and with your summoned entities recently? I mean, it makes it easier to summon and resummon. Yes, I guess you are right. Uh, I do wish you the best of luck in that. Hopefully you don't... Uh, hopefully, whatever your entity is, it's not too hard for you to handle. Uh... Well, again, that's why it's after the gallery. <laughs> uh, Ray, I'd like you to make some kind of interaction task to impress Adestrea with your speech and descriptions. Awesome. I will do that. It's interaction. Um, I'm actually really good at interaction. So that's yeah. neat. So, uh, I will use a Bene. Um, for this. It is Stoics that have the plus one, so you do not. Do you get it? Are you using a hidden knowledge? Huh? Are you using a hidden knowledge? Yeah, because this is definitely the time to use it. Okay. What is your little bit of hidden knowledge? Um, just his connection with his art. Like, he is, he is the one who knows himself the best. And so he will... He... He can sort of like help guide the viewer in sort of seeing how the details become the big picture and how you know it's that connection um and so that is plus two right so seven plus two is nine she nods um are you gonna be selling any of your pieces um reina told me to potentially expect um buyers you know usually i have it's clay you know if a piece doesn't last long reclaim it um but very true very true 
Um, I might be interested in one of them, that is why. Regardless yeah. of who is chosen for the gallery. Of course, yes. Um, you can talk to Reyna about all those details, but any of these pieces would be available to you. I'll let her know to, if it hasn't been climbed already, the little pointy shock. Yes. I like that one. It's called the Porky Pig from the Shadow. <laughs> that is very endearing. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. I'm going to keep looking around and I'll get those details from Raina. Of course, that is It was, again, thank you so much for coming here. She holds out her hand to you. And he takes it very, uh, you know, and does like a really like, just like an easy shake. Uh, Lace, what are you, uh, Lace and Sophrona, what are you doing? Um, can I do a quick pass by on Yasser? And I am going, uh, hi. Um, could you do me a favor? Do you see these? I mean, it's like, do you know if Mikkel is available at all? Like, in the, in the near future? Um, my, uh, Yasser is, my like, mid-conversation with Ishmael, uh, and- Sorry. It's okay. You're good. I can bo- I can bother Ishmael anytime I like. We're neighbors. And you certainly do. I certainly do. <laughs> um, Michael is pretty available unless he's on an emergency with the parasol. Um, I know he's been was busy for a little bit, but I think he's back soon. Okay. Why? Do you see the plants? I it's hard have not a, to. I have a concern that might, if shit hits the fan, I'm hoping it doesn't rise to the level of parasite business, but. Um, I could talk more about it later because it's not a it's not a good venue. It's not a good venue, but <laughs> Am I hearing this? <laughs> is, I don't know, Sifrona, is Ishmael hearing this? Sure. <laughs> She's not. She's well, just... Lace was gonna go up and talk to Ishmael, so if oh. they're You can you can hear Ishmael like he he's a busybody, obviously. He was hoping for some like nice little gossip because he just heard a little nugget about Yasser. It was like, oh, is this more? And it's just like about the plants. He's like, wait a second, I thought we're good on that front. And then you can catch him while he's like, like white yeah. woman mathing uh, the situation. <laughs> yeah, she's like low, like low tones, but like if you're still standing there, it's like if Lace doesn't physically pull you away, you would hear this. Mm. Oh. Are you okay? You look concerned. Uh, no, I am perfectly fine. Uh, and he, he turns to look at you. Um, uh, he was like, I was just hoping to hear some fun little gossip about Yasser, but do you need me for something? So something I can assist you with? Well, not specifically. But I was sort of hoping that as a Goetic, maybe you could, like, have a heart to heart with my dear you need to get your words out heart to heart with what just it's it's probably nothing it's it's fine it's just i'm wondering the plants uh, no. concern me uh, the plants concern you they seem to be concerning yeah. you both <laughs> they look like a beautiful decoration to me but apparently not you, you, you've got to trust. You got to trust me. They're like, you have not yeah. done anything to not receive my trust. It's true. I'm just very confused. Just uh, <laughs> similarly, <laughs> <laughs> this is the, like I, I like to imagine that because Ish, Ishmael and Yasser are like actually very very similar people. That's why they are, there's a lot of friction, and they both like just have very similar face, <laughs> like same what expression. I'm so you know how sometimes. Something can like grab something, like, like, like you know. <laughs> I don't understand what you're trying to get at. Uh, you brought you, up the translate, Sephrona. It's um. Do you know what mint is? Yes. Okay. The plants are mint. Invasive. Conceptually. 
Yes. You know, the just everywhere. everywhere. Makes yes. sense. Yes. So, um, I have a concern. I don't know what they do, but I have a concern. Uh, the parasitic, um, do you know what Emerin is? No. Okay. Okay. Um, see, we were new. Sephora's not very good at explaining things is the problem. Um, I mm-hmm. just, I just need, uh, <clears throat> they're parasitic, they're bad, I think it's bad for... If they're bad, then wouldn't it be best to get, like, a gardener? I, I, I think the problem is, is that it's worse than that. This is like a magical invisible root sort of thing, like... That's grabbing, p- grabbing things. Uh, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm still trying to piece uh, how that has anything to do with my abilities as a goetic. No, I just thought that on like a personal level, maybe it would be better coming from someone who's like the same order as Ray. Maybe you could like, you know. Just standing in the middle of the room, huddled. <laughs> I, 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 see, I see Ray. I see Ray like uh, wanting to hop in on here. Just approaching. Yeah. Small little group. I I do want to I do want to say our Sephronian lays so focused on Yasser and Ismail that there is a potential that Ray could come up behind you. I mean, we've been keeping an eye on Ray, right? Okay. Like specifically, yeah. but. I mean, with La- while Lace is like crab handsing, there is very, yeah. there is very much like a chance yeah, like, that you would come up and she's just yeah. doing like grab things, you know. Is there no. something wrong? Hmm. Such good food, so so perfect. Yasser looks at you, Ishmael. Ishmael is looking right at Yasser as well. Like, this like, is the greatest you- moment of solidarity between like, these two characters. Like, what are we, like, given you, like, the back and forth, like, do we say anything? What do we say? Like, uh, Ishmael, like, looks at Yasser in the very look of, like, I'm going to say something incredibly obtuse right now, which is very, very uncharacteristic of me, but I can't keep watching this happen. <laughs> uh, so uh, Ishmael says, uh, nothing is wrong, Rain. Um, Lace just, uh, kindly mentioned that I- that you might need a heart-to-heart with me. Regarding something? Um... Oh, Sephrona, Lace, I already spoke with this mail. Is it aware? So yes, it's like, I will- Wait! Right. Ishmael yeah. smiles at Yasser. <laughs> He's like, good save, good save. <laughs> And he just takes That's like a big drink. So good. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah, I just would, you know. In fact, I have every faith in uh, Ray's abilities to uh, call forth this entity. I will be assisting. Oh, you already know about the the entity. Yes, Songbird. Aspen has wandered up by this point. For the gossip. <laughs> this is a whole big group that's huddled <laughs> in front of the bear. <laughs> Specifically in front of the bear. Is this, should we do this while everyone is here? No, it's after the gallery to celebrate me learning their name. Please, I've met Reyna once or twice, and he is very professional. I am s- there. God. He is a godsend of an agent. <laughs> yes. Very much so. You got yourself a wonderful agent. Yes. And this show is so, like, and I think Leia's turns to Ray with, like, genuine, like, joy. And it's like, this is going so well. I just, you, I just want your entire night to be trouble free. And I think his face drops. Oh, oh. Just for a moment. Not a drop, not like a sad drop, but something almost stern. Which is strange on Ray's face. And he is going to say, 
I understand your concerns. You've made them clear. However, I think you are acting in an alarmist manner. When I do summon my dear friend, even if there might be an issue, they cannot stay here for long. That is the nature of summoning. I'm sure Drusera's people believed that too. There is no proof of that. But if you do not trust me, I can tell you about it tomorrow. Ishmael takes a big swig from his drink. <laughs> but I stands very firmly with, with Lace. Me. Lace looks at Yasser, who is at the moment the group the one among the group who has least annoyed her. <laughs> um and and says I'm going to go get some more croissants. I'm going to go look at the very large installation. Wonderful job, Ray. Thank you. Um, if you notice on the installation, um, sharks have rough patterns. So, um, and clay actually holds up pretty okay against um, the oils and the way that it's glazed. So if you run your hand one way, it'll be smooth. But if you run your hand the other way, I've used some micro carving techniques to make it feel like the rough skin. Can I touch it? Yes. He will touch the uh, the rough skin of the shark. Um, Aspen, you said you were coming up at some point? Yes, Aspen saw the huddle and was like, what the hell, guys? And <laughs> absolutely <laughs> went to join. Well, I, I would like you to actually make a perception check while you are making your way over there, please. Making my way. What am I? What am I doing? <laughs> you can use your perception. Am I trying? You can use a hidden knowledge. Uh, you can use sortilege to imbue it with magic. What am I trying to perceive? Oh, because you're keeping an eye on Adastrea the entire time, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I will use a bene. Um, what session is this? Five. Okay, yeah, I'll use a hidden knowledge. Oh. Trying to do math. All right, and what's your hidden How do you use them? What is your, your little bit of hidden knowledge that helps you perceive better? Um, I am very used to, uh, actually, I'm going to use this as hidden knowledge because I didn't actually give the direction to Helia, but I am asking Helia to also help me keep an eye on extra. Okay, perfect. Um, and Sortilage, yes or no? Well, I already looked, and it's a zero. Um, on the dice. That's a two. Yep. Yeah, you don't see anything interesting with Adastrea. Son of a biscuit. Okay. Just some fun, some fun personal information on this lady. Anyway, uh. you walk up to the group. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up to the group. You have this like you have this moment of Ray becoming that very stern for just a moment before again like almost like a flip of a switch you know the artist but his his message was to Sophrona and Lace and potentially to Aspen too is if you are not going to be supportive tonight he is very fine with telling you about it tomorrow which means you can leave <laughs> And I think Lace is, like, seriously considering it. That's fine. She's real annoyed. Oof. I'm going to Ooh. look at Sophrona. Um, I think I missed something. What is happening? Mm. I've been very distracted by my face everywhere, so I cannot no, keep track of much. Lace is showing her whole ass. Says Shard. <laughs> um I'm sensing some tension and I'm not sure where it came from 
Lace. Lace. It might help. Uh, it doesn't look like Ray is serving alcohol, but I'm sure if you ask the lady with the wings, she would give you some from her flask. Actually, I think Lace, who has at this point left the group to go get food. Like, I think okay. she left the group okay. when... Then you might not when... have heard that then. Yeah, I no, think... I don't think... I don't think I don't think she's with Shard still. I no. think she went over to the um she's like looking at the door and like rage plating. Oh no. Hmm. I'm like uh, seriously considering how much trouble I'm gonna cause here. Did did Shard say that? Uh the first part. And I, it would have been worded appropriate uh grammatically appropriate for her not being there, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm just going to kind of glance at Shard, and I'm going to pat Ray's back with the uh, ring on my hand, and just telepathically say, I'm not sure what I miss, but I'm here to support. That's all that I can say. Yeah, I think almost like a snap back. Like, like almost like, like, almost as if Sephrona had touched you, that static sort of, like, snap back of, like, they're just talking about song being dangerous again. Um, I'm going to say very quickly, hey, Songbird, what's up? Before I You get the respond. mental image of a wave. Um, Songbird's vibing tonight. Very being respectful of your time and your big moment. Uh, I'll just tell Ray. Um, I will do what I can to take care of them. This is your night. Do what it is that you need to do. And I will pull my hand back and step back into the group. Probably have a little quiet conversation with Sifrona. Um, just of, let's let's just tone it down a bit. This is a lovely evening for Ray. We're here to support. Mm. But I don't, I don't like it. I don't like these plants. I don't like it's <sighs> the shard pipes up. Well, Ray said it's an open house. Sorry for being blunt. Is this still in front of Ray? Too? I, yeah, is this still in front of Ishmael as well? Because like everyone's saying some re like yeah, th shard has this no is this filter. Ishmael sh stuff. Shard yeah, has no just say filter. Anything. So, I mean, she'll yeah. say, you already know, I mean, Ray already knows that she doesn't like the plants anyway, so. Yeah. She's known this uh, for a while. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Ishmael would, uh, if Ray so allows and is comfortable with touch, like, very gently, almost like a, like, uh, like a mentor to, like, someone that's like, I, you did a good job here. I'm affirming you in this moment. He, like, touches your forearm to reassure you. And then says, I, forgive me, I do not have enough of the context as to everyone's concerns here, but I do feel like I would be doing you all a disservice if I do not clarify how something functions. When an entity is brought forth to a summoner, there is protections, there are things put in place to ensure nothing goes wrong. Certainly, Kaliloquy can fail, but... Ray and this entity have rapport. So, um... I do not know. I am quite concerned that uh, folks seem to be very, very uh, apprehensive usually, about this. Do they usually send plants across wherever they come from? I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, do I know about, like... Because they keep referring to plants. I, I think Ishmael would like want to clarify that actually in character. Um, what do you mean by sending forth plants? I you there is a lot of referencing references to the, the plants. The plants are from your friends. I'm picking up somebody else's accent. <laughs> plants are from your friends. Are they not, Ray? Is that not a bad songbird, thing? Songbird, songbird, gifted me these plants. There is a per there is a there is a person named um, who looked at these plants and was reminded of a fall of their half world, but there is no proof 
that these plants had anything to do with that. We, we, even went, we even went to go check up on these plants and the flowers that we're seeing here, they couldn't find out what they were. There was no sentience. The only thing that might be of some concern is what we read in, Hoth, in Hawthorne's journal, Ismail, is mm-hmm. that this plant requires life force from other material, from other plant materials. Mm-hmm. It's Ishmael a sentient nods. being. I don't think Ishmael it is nods. any different than potentially cultivating a farm to eat of its fruits. Except the last time that we know of, of any of these vines been around, it collapsed an entire world, an entire half. Do you really... Uh. You don't know that. Um, you don't not not know that. Uh, this conversation is taking a turn for the roundabout. Let me interject here. Uh, and Ishmael kind of like really puts his goetic ass in here. Uh, and he's just like, um, Ray, did you already have a place set out for this summoning? Or are, are you are you married to that location? Or may I suggest a alternative um with my personal stock of red clay Mm -hmm. underneath are the protective carpet of the floor tonight i have a summoning circle already ready i meant to summon them here inside of my home where i first heard them uh ishmael i think would detect that you you seem pretty like this is you really want it to happen here yeah right he really wants it to happen but he's looking at you and instead of this like defensive anger that he's pointing at like Sophrona, mm-hmm. and yeah. um he, it's 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 much more of like i'm willing to listen to you yeah but he is I also think, on yeah. purpose saying that like this is very important to me yeah ishmael was trying to gauge like how how important the location was for your something uh, and Ishmael, like you see, this the two snakes are up at his face, uh, uh, both Vasuki and Shesha. And he is like, "All right, uh, you seem you've already prepared the summoning circle. That is fine." Uh, I was initially going to suggest, uh, if safety is such a concern, yes. um, that we could go to the clock tower of the order. Adastrea actually is off to the side looking at one of the things and casually a little louder than normal just to get her her voice across. Um, actually, I think that's taken tonight. I think Emma... Or not that is taken tonight. (laughs) I believe Emma Elizabeth is doing a summoning. Of course she is. (laughs) And I don't think you want to deal with her. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I do not, actually. Right. Uh, thanks. Emma Elizabeth is a bitch. You don't... She's a bitch. You don't want to deal with her. <laughs> you see Ishmael, like, nods, like... She she did my... Uh, she held the ceremony for my advancement to second degree. It was terrifying. You don't need... You don't need to do that. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of advancing after this. Summer. Oh, no, you may advance, but... Uh, I believe I might sit on not in on that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll and see if, how the schedule And if Ishmael is not available, I would love to help you advance to the second degree. Thank you, Adestrea. Um, and I think with that, like, with this sort of, like, energy that is coming, like, a positivity, like, almost like a support behind him, mm-hmm. Ray does look at Sophrona. And, you know, like, if it's okay, like, Ray is like, Sophrona, you are very important to me, but this night was meant to celebrate a lot of my hard work, and I I feel right now very hurt by the things that you've said and the way that you've acted, and so I'm asking if maybe we can meet at another time to discuss your concerns, and if maybe tonight. You could 
um, you could enjoy a walk home. Can I? Hold on one second. Let me check something really fast. Uh oh. I love this. <laughs> you know, since since we already cleared this in chat. Um, can I use my freedom from change, ephemera, on our central statue here? Uh, what does that <gasps> do? Read it for me. Um, it is a freedom comes from change. An object up to four times as large as human becomes a small flock of birds that then fly away. It is a level six plus one die colored gold. Um, I'm just looking at it super quick. If 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 I get the O. Oh fuck! I keep I, scratching my tattoo. I, I I have I have um I have given my full consent yeah. for this super dramatic bullshit to about, about to happen. Yeah. I'm yeah. so fucking yeah. hyped, guys. You, I asked in advance. You may. So I'm gonna do that as I'm walking out. What type of birds are they? Um, I'm gonna say, let's say they're um. Albatrosses are not small birds, but you can imagine them as really tiny albatrosses because that feels weirdly appropriate. Do you want to describe how they act like around the whole house? Because I'm assuming birds yeah, suddenly are in some space probably please, isn't good. Please tell me what happens as you dramatically exit the scene. Um, I am, I don't know what this, I don't know what shape I am. I'm just going to walk past it and like the sick, I'm not going to even look at it. I'm just going to walk past it and the second... I walk past it, it's going to burst into all of these little, all these little, like, yeah, they're extremely tiny birds, and they're just going to, like, it's going to stay there for a second. It's just a bunch of birds, like, perching on top of each other. And then they're just going to, like, scatter, explode out as if, um, yeah, they're just going to scatter and explode out, and they're going to do, like, a whole, um, You know how albatrosses, they just like hover sort of on the wind without flapping their wings. They're just going to like go out and they're going to sort of coast. That's what it's coast around the room like that, just everywhere. Um, and they will be looking for whatever windows and exits happen to exist. Um, but you're going to be stuck with a bunch of like coasting birds for a while until they find this fucking exit. I, I think that's a dramatic way to end a scene. I just want to say, let's all take a moment to picture the Am I the Asshole Reddit posts that come from this party. <laughs> Am I the asshole for turning my friend's statue into a flock of birds? <laughs> Potentially ruining their exhibit? Yeah. I mean, she's not going to say anything, so it's like, maybe they think that's on purpose. I don't know. She's not going to say mean, anything. Yeah, I mean, Ray is going to tell them that that wasn't on purpose, so <laughs> I love this. Um... Okay. She's just beeline for the exit. She's not going to look for anything. Um, I'll think about where she's going, but you guys don't know where she's going. So straight out. All right. Um, anything super quick anyone wants to address before we go to a summoning as the exhibit begins to wind down and there's a lot of now bird poop. When, um, um sorry. Oh. No, I was just going to say for the record, Lace was not, because I said it in our chat, but not out loud. Lace was gone by the time this happened. She just, like, faded out. When um, Adestrea spoke up, Aspen looked at her and, like, pulled his glasses down and stared, but they did not say anything. They just noted that. Pretty blatant. Yeah. Um, on my end, uh, Reyna tries to help with the birds at the end of the night trying to shoo them out the door uh apologetically looking at ray sorry that this happened um type of vibes and helping with whatever else like tidying up cleaning garbage and so on and so forth um everyone says goodbye adestrea actually goes around and individually says uh nice to meet you i hope you have a lovely evening to everybody who is still there because it's there weren't that many people there there was at most i think like 16 i don't remember what the actual count was but less than 20. uh this includes you aspen um 
lovely to see you as always, Adestraya. Always? Have we met before? Have we met before? Just in a few circles here and there. We've crossed paths, but I wouldn't expect you to remember me. It's quite all right. You're very eye-catching. Makes sense that I would have seen you first. Well, thank you, and don't be a stranger next time. I'll do my best. And she will eventually take her leave. Uh, Ray, she did work with Reyna to purchase the the porcupine shark. I will uh, remind me later, and I will get you money for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, when the birds happen, like um, I think Ray watched Sephrona leave, and then just sort of like. Um, there, there has been no joy on his face for the rest of the evening. Um, it's been a very, it's been a very stoic look, like a very, like a, like a, like a slight curl of the lips, um, you know, saying thank you to, for, to Adestrea, apologizing for um, the, apologizing for the way that the evening um, went, um, but that he, he was grateful to get to share like his bits of passion. Um, he has like carefully like covered the rest of the statues so they don't get like any droppings on them. Um, and is sort of like, again, helping sort of clean up his own uh, exhibition. And it's just a little, little hard to talk to. Like he seems very, like he is, he is moving around. Uh, Raina does ask at some point if there is anything he could do besides just the general cleanup and regular responsibilities. Uh, if You've you... done so much this evening, and I'm so sorry that anything got messed up right now. I'm more worried about you. Uh, that was a very dramatic exit, and I'm sorry that your biggest and best piece uh, is now a flock of mini albatross. <laughs> it was just a couple of weeks of work. It's not even one of my longest. Um, and I think his eyes are watering and he very, he, he puffs up his chest. He takes a deep breath. It's going to be okay. <laughs> um, and sort of like wipes at his eyes and it's just like, I got to display my art for people who appreciate it. That's, that's what matters. And now I'm going to meet one of my oldest friends. So. I hope it goes well. Um, yes. Adestrea was very impressed with your work. She was telling me about it, so. Fantastic. I'll cross my fingers for you. I will see you soon, and best of luck. Okay. Uh. Ray, I know Ishmael is going to be here, but is anyone else staying? I'm Lace and Sephrona, no, but what about Aspen? Aspen is, is staying, is not leaving until Ray tells them to leave. <laughs> I think when it's only, um, is Ishmael's partner staying too? No, right? Yes. Only and if you want them to be there, but I... if you don't want them to be there. I have no problem going home. I could honestly get out of these. Uh, I would just be a backup in case something happens with the circle. I took great care and time. I, I figured. I, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine, Kevin. Yeah. I'll go home. Oh. Let me. I didn't want to say anything after the one gentleman came in with his shoes messed up, but. And then Ray snaps at the door and like a path rises through the bog. And he's like, I figured if I did it after he messed up his shoes, he might be mad. Um, but since it's just you left now, you can just, you don't have to worry about the bog. Thank you. I appreciate it. I can't believe I forgot to do that before. My friend could also be take, uh, pegged down a couple notches too. Also, Ishmael just gives you a look before leaning to kiss you on the cheek. 
I'll see you in a couple hours. See you in the bed. See you at home. And they leave. So yeah. <sighs> Tell me what uh how everything goes, Ray. What do you do for your summoning? So he has moved these like the the pedestals that like were holding his arc. And he, you know, he tells them to take a seat while he sort of like um rolls this like um like this this nice now dropping stained carpet with like and then but also had like a sheet on like almost like a sheet of plastic under it and rolls it over and it's this enormous summoning circle that takes up a majority of like the air the display area that they had been in and it is intricate geometric shapes but also curling around the circle and making uh and almost like wrapping around the name is um uh vines again these vines that he has been obsessed with and sort of like again just carefully detailed in red clay all around Cuscura Street is the as the true name of the entity of Songbird. But like he has also put Songbird like in the circle as well. Um and he he stands up and he looks at Ismail and Aspen and he smiles and it's tired and sad. But there is like, there is a glint in his eye and he is like, this is my heart. Surrounded by art in this home that has been everything. This is my heart. Um, yeah, and he steps back and he begins to summon. What does it look like when you summon this particular entity? I think almost like the roots that Sephrona would have seen. Um, it almost seems to like, like some light begins to gather around Ray, starting from the center of his back and it shoots out in the shape of roots with like you know the thorns the flowers but none of it is turned on to him it is carefully not piercing him and but it like slides down his arms it holds his body and then shoots down into the floor and follows the intricate trails of the red clay as it becomes plant matter it's almost like the whole thing begins to sprout. It grows the flowers that have been f sprouting along the bog. And then a light at the center, in the center of the circle where Songbird and Cuscuta Striga like have been carefully detailed the light and then it expands as the worlds come together. As this light appears and your plant begins to grow from this large vines, very large, the size of a human's torso, growing and growing, beginning to just completely fill this some internal summoning circle, hitting uh, a small barrier, this edge where this protective circle is. The thorns grow and grow sharper, about as big as a human's forearm, pointy and purple tinged. And they grow and they grow, almost never ending. It's, well, at least to Aspen and Ishmael, it gives off intimidating vibes, but Ray, this is not an entity that means you harm. And you all just feel a burst of joy in the air, of success, of triumph. 
as you hear the voice of Songbird. Clearest most to Ray and Ishmael, who as Goetics are able to speak the language of any summoned entity from any sun. Aspen, you feel vibes. I'm out. I'm out. Um, Ray, I'm out. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think Ray uh, sort of puts his hands out onto like the thick part of the vine and uh, runs them over, like almost like, uh, like when you haven't seen someone in a long time. Um, long distance people will know. Like you're making sure that they're real. You're making sure that they exist. And Ray sort of like just lowers his head onto uh, one of the vines, and it's just like, yes, dear. <laughs> Hello, darling. Uh, remind me, Ray, how long can a first degree goetic hold an entity for? I believe it's like an hour. Uh, yes, one hour. Okay. Uh, they Songbird doesn't necessarily grasp you. That would injure you and harm you. But there is a light wrapping around your legs, just just far enough so it doesn't injure you. But it's a hug of some sort. And. For a second, it's just so excited it can't speak. Before turning to Ishmael and Aspen, almost giving a wave with a single vine. Hello, hello, Ish hi, thank you. Nice to You're meet you. You're welcome. Pleasure to meet you as well. And Ishmael would be translating for Aspen uh, this entire time. Uh, not like word for word, but definitely like. Uh, Songbird is greeting us um, and saying thank you, <laughs> like things like that. Aspen, uh, while this creature and entity was being summoned, Helia is hiding behind you. Hiding. In paralyzed fear. I am going to um, turn to Helia and God, she has to be like kneeling down and cowering because she's much taller than I am. Um, I'm going to kneel down and try to like get her attention. Um, talk to me. What's happening? What, what can I do? It's scary. Um, do you want to go home with that? I don't think I can get home. Can't move. Okay. Um, and Ishmael, you see me just talking to the air. Um, at this point, everybody else in the group has seen me do this. Um, mm -hmm. And Aspen is kind of like turning back and forth, like trying to still engage in conversation with Songbird, but checking in on Helia. Um, and We'll finally just turn back around. Um, it's it's lovely to meet you, Songbird. Ray, I think I have to go home. Oh, okay. It's nothing. I I wish I could stay. Um, I and Aspen is not going to say anything about Helia because of the tension and the conversation with Rosera. Um, Aspen does not want Ray to think that Songbird is causing any harm. Um, okay. uh, Helia is, is tired. Um, I'd like to check in, uh, with Osmond before, before getting to bed. I wanted to at least be able to, to see Songbird and, well, awkwardly pat, um, because Osmond doesn't know what to do, um, and be here for this. But I think it's time for us to go home, if that's all right with you, dear. Yes. I think it's something called a handshake and, like, a single vine comes out to you, Aspen. Oh, um, and we'll awkwardly <laughs> shake hands. Um, thank you, Songbird. It, it is. It's, it's lovely to see you in person. And Aspen is starting to already walk away, trying to get out of the house. Yeah. Um, is Helia coming with me? or yes, she's she is coming with you. She's scampering. 
the best okay. word. Okay. I'm going to keep my body as much between them and Songbird as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Ray. Um, but I want you to have this time with Songbird again. I'm very happy for you, dear. Thank you. When Aspen leaves, Songbird turns the attention, their attention back to the two Goetics, and one of them being their best friend. So, so you were able to do it. When, when, when can I, can I get out? When can I, I really want to see the world. I want to hang out with you and I want to do things. Yeah, your friend Hawthorne probably helped it before. Do you remember that name? Yeah, a visitor one day. Do you know them? I'd love to see them again. Uh, Ishmael, you would know that uh, Hawthorne uh, and Blackthorn has not been seen since after the war. Blackthorn, yeah. Uh, Ishmael, I think I think both Ishmael and Ray would have like read, would have like tried to. I think that would have been the first thing they would have tried to research to be like, can we talk to this person? No, we have no idea where the fuck they were. So, <laughs> so Ishmael, uh, it like um, kind of makes a face uh, and kind of like lets Ray give that news because it's not his place. Um, unfortunately, I don't know them directly. Right now, I wouldn't know where to find them. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's part of exploring and everything. I can look for them, too. Yeah. Right now, the longest I can hold you here is for an hour. We can give you water. Can, your your lovely plants might be able to help you feel a little bit more. But I'm working on it. I'm working on... And I can take you different places. And show you different places. As you're talking about this the emotional vibes in the air just sink. As yeah, well, <laughs> while it sinks, can I vibe check? Because uh, Ishmael's being supportive to Ray, but Ishmael is a cunning uh, motherfucker who knows when to play his card, and now he's playing the card of vibe checking this entity. Roll an insight check. Woohoo! Uh, fantastic. I will do that. Um, try. I remember I have a funny little because that is interaction Benny, Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seven, so I will spend three. Uh, bring it down to four. And I, yep, I'll spend three. And I will also use a hidden knowledge because I don't want to fuck this up because I want to give insight to. And my hidden knowledge is the aspect that like Ishmael has dealt with entities that hide and he has uh and his shadow skill is uh persuasion so he he understands people's movements and emotions and emotiveness so mm -hmm. so that is a plus four so don't fuck with me die okay so that is a nine total it's an open book it wasn't trying to hide it's a, mm -hmm. it's getting upset. It's it was hopeful and it was hoping to get out of where and it's getting sad and upset and all these complicated negative feelings. Not so much like a child who said who was just told they can't stay the night. They can't have that. They can't pet the dog. It's upset. It's sad, but a little naive. Like, like kind of like teetering on like a like a tantrum a little bit like teetering yes. there right teetering but not exactly a tantrum yeah but you said you would help me right yes i'm but i'm i'm I, but, and look you're here but and but, again i can but i can't if i if i if, if i go back i it, it's so lonely over there i know do i have to go back only for a little while I'm I I'm not I don't know how to keep you here I don't I don't know yet and songbird grows quiet very quiet and the vines just kind of drip lower very sad very heavy and then 
bugs, like large praying mantises with the heads of beasts, of wolves, begin to meld and melt off of Songbird. Same plants, but in the multitudes. You see butterflies with the heads of sharks. You see dragonflies with far too many legs, with large bird-like wings. And these creations just keep melting off of it like you taught them back in your dreams on how to better move about without being a big mass of a mess. And the inside of your summoning circle is filled with all of these animalistic creations that are all songbird. And have you all heard of the hornets when they swarm something and begin to basically burn it through vibrations? Think of that vibe no. as the inside. <clears throat> you have never heard of this? No! Oh, you mm -hmm. will talk about it later. It's horrifying! Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll talk about, it's a thing. We'll talk about it later. But the inside is suddenly filled with all of these bugs who all begin to vibrate. And the in the protective circle? In the protective circle. Okay. And the rocks begin to tremble before the summoning circle breaks. I'm going to give you a despair, Ray, for the breaking of your summoning circle. Mm -hmm. And just like before when Sifrona left, with all the birds soaring about is now insects, all winged beings, some poofs of some pollen as songbird begins to swarm a cry of despair in the air as you just hear I don't want to die I don't want to go back I don't want to be alone constantly constantly before it swarms the two of you and they leave the house and that's where we're going to end the session uh. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about this at brunch. <laughs> Mrs. Oh. Glad she left early. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing the two of you left early. Anyway, hello everybody. That was session five of Frank Threat's Invisible Sun campaign. We're all going to quickly go around, say hey, uh, whether you think you got an acumen tonight, as well as a joy or despair, and then who you are, where we can find you. Uh, who would like to go first? I'm I can shell jump shocked. In. Someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we can we can go backwards. I can go. All right. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Valiant Dorian. I use him his pronouns. Uh, I guessed it today. This was a lot of fun. Um. Sorry, uh, I, you can find me all around the internet at Valiant Doran or at Also Spirit Bear. Please enjoy that lovely treasure hunt I just sent you on. Uh, and tonight, I had a distinct pleasure of playing Ishmael, uh, who uses he, they pronouns and is an iconoclastic empath from the Order of Goetics who calls upon the serpent. I don't need to worry about acumen or despair or joy because I'm good. I rescued my partner. We're all good, she over here. This is your problem now, Ray. <laughs> And yeah, I'm going to pass uh, the baton to folks over here. I'll go. Hi, I'm Jilly. My pronouns are she, her. You can find me at Oh Look It's Jilly on the internet. Uh, Jilly is with a G. It's like silly, but with a J sound. Um, I play Lace, who is a bizarre ardent of the Order of Weavers who splinters into fragments. Um, I could definitely got a despair today. Um, I don't think I I don't think I progressed on my character arc, so probably no acumen for me. But definitely a despair, which means mare dreams do come true. I got a despair. I don't remember what the order was, so just popcorn it. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Gina. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Gina Bin. Um, I just realized I, Gina is with an E, not an I. Um, it's important. Um, 
Uh, I played Sephrona. Um, and wait, I can do this. An established ardent of the Order of the Vance, who is adored by the sea. Awesome. Um, I say this will definitely be despair, even though I had a lot of fun using an ephemera. It's the first one I used. Yay! Um, but that is a despair. Um, I also think that um, she did not progress. She argued with people, though, which is fun. Uh, so that's where we're at. I'm gonna go to Kian. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Kian. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. You can find me on Twitter at uptight underscore chiffon. Uh, next, I'm going to be hanging out over on Lost Caravan. So definitely come hang out over there on Saturday. Um, we're doing Fabulous Ultima campaign. Uh, tonight, I have played Aspen, who is a connected gallant of the Order of Makers who walks with a secret companion. Um, definitely a despair um, and definitely no acumen tonight. Uh, Aspen was here as a supporting character and it was still real stressful. <laughs> but I will hand it over to Victor. I'm hour. still not ready, but we're going. We're doing this. Hi, my name is Victor. I use they, he, and fey pronouns. Um, today, I was your uh, goetic... Uh, Ray, the saddest man alive, a bizarre ardent of the Order of Goetica, <laughs> who disgorges creatures. Um, I don't know how it works when you finish an arc, because I did it. Well, well, I I'll, summoned. We'll get. We'll get it. I can't remember. It usually happens. You later get cool in the campaign, shit, but you get extra cool. stuff. Cool. Um, I did it. It was awful, um, but Ray was like super happy for like two moments tonight. Like, he's like, all my friends are here. My friend fucked up my whole fucking life. Hey, I summoned the thing that I love so dearly. Uh-oh. It didn't go well. <laughs> it went wrong? great. It just escaped. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm like, there's a lot of joy here. But there's also a lot of despair. Which one? Um, You know what? I'm going to go with joy. Good idea. Good choice. Um... You can be despair later when yeah, everything comes to a head. <laughs> Ray hasn't processed it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's about to happen. <laughs> it hasn't hit you yet. Yeah. Uh, um, Where can we just, find you? You can find me on Twitter. Um, right now, I am running... Uh, I, I am part of a Kickstarter campaign for Mall Kids, and uh, Mall Kids Unnamed Expansion. Right now, I am uh, I am personally writing about uh, urban legends and the weird shit that you would come up with as kids to explain weird shit happening to people. Ooh. And so, uh, yes, also cryptids. So, like, please, please help fund my Kickstarter. And also a plug for Val, because, like, Val's also crowdfunding an amazing fucking cool game called The Beast Within. Um, <laughs> Val forgot to plug himself, so I'm going to do it for him. He's, he's, he's so Val's. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's successfully funded. It's it successfully is funded. funded. So if you missed it, now you, you, you can still get it. Yes, the stretch goals. The next one, make, uh, if you let me hit my mythological art stretch goal, I have to make my artist draw deviant art wolves. So Ooh. if you want those cool, like, winged wolves, help me hit that stretch goal, and then I have to go to him and tell him, you gotta do this now. We have yeah. the money, we so we have to do it now. You're getting paid <laughs> we love money. that for you. <laughs> Listen, y'all gotta do it. Now that I know that now, I I have already given money. So now the rest of you, if you can. I've already, I already money. contributed to the crowdfunding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was pointing out fuck. to the internet land. Okay, yeah. Everybody out there. Um, I think yeah, I everybody out there in internet land. I think that leaves me. Hi, I'm Mayor. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, or Jimmy Jim Dice. Right now, uh, I am here every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern on Horizons Call playing your lovely uh, Soul Knife Rogue Druid. Uh, Acacia, who is a centaur, the that uh, that every Thursday I'm here at 7 p.m. game mastering this game. Uh, for channel games right now, on this coming Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we have our premiere of our Ryutama short campaign. Uh, please go check that out this week. Uh, speaking of mall kids, on Monday the 10th at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have a one shot helping support the project on Kickstarter. So please go check that out. I am super super excited about that and. 
On April 16th, we have the Brindlewood Bay premiere. That's at six. Those are Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern. That's a game every other week, which is a charity campaign. Uh, don't know off the top of my head which charity it's going to be, but please go check that out. And last but not least, on Wednesday, April 19th, we will have a sword and tea game with the creator of Mall Kids, Matthew Gra Gravelin, talking about the game. Uh... Thank you, Eva, for putting the crowdfunder for Val's game in chat. Everyone, please go check that out. Help us reach the mythical creature stretch goal so we can do that. Uh, I think that's it. Everybody have a nice evening. Thank you, Val, for joining us and guesting for this everything and the summoning. <laughs> um, we are going to go raid Neon Lights Roleplay, who are playing some lovely TTRPGs by the name of A Blade's Will. So... Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>